it's five o'clock somewhere. All right, let's see here. Or are you just surviving? <laughs> if you're if you're just tuning in, okay, the website's updated. Okay, I sure it's that easy. Update my website. Beep boop. Done. People, people. Actually, beep, I had beep, somebody beep. message me on my site today. I say, "Hey, the grammar in your site looks pretty bad." Just FYI. All right, people are actually <laughs> watching. So. Love that. Tell me, you had Chat GPT right? I'm for like, you. I had a fifth grader make it. Oh, no, I'm smarter. He swears he could <sighs> paste this. I know I did not make him grammatical. Right? Someone, literally, somebody literally <laughs> emailed you and said the grammar on your website. They literally used the All contact right. box on my website to let me know the grammar was messed up on the oh, beginning man. page. Oh, well. That was nice of him. Yeah, yeah. I already knew. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, somebody, I won't say who, DC Douglas, uh, copied and pasted that um, website and fixed me up a site. <laughs> I don't remember misspelling that, saying I know the difference between your and your... <laughs> It was an ironic misspelling. Oh, yes. All right. That's what it was. Spelled by irony. All right. So we're hot. <laughs> I know we're hot. Uh, well, some of us are hot. hot. Some eight, of us. Eight viewers. All right. Well, that's more than we had. Nine. That's awesome. Well, I bring in the numbers. <laughs> it's... Let's wait for them to get hit. We're going to get those double digits tonight. Woo. Yeah. Well, lots of people watch the show and replay. But yep. you guys understand that this is why what makes the show work is you asking you questions and. You know, you yes. interacting with us and our social media guy, Jeff, who's over here. Do you guys realize how much harder it is to do a live show than a pre-tape? Let's just put, we got to get John in the studio at a specific time. Mm -hmm. You know how much of a big deal that is? Because Spectrum was down. So <laughs> Spectrum, <laughs> Spectrum was down? Spectrum was down. Spectrum's down. Well, we're, it's well, we're on not. here. <laughs> well, I don't live here. <laughs> oh, okay. Right. I don't know. It's been weird for a while. Ever I since know. The, ever since the storms and they fixed it. It's, it's been intermittent ever a Chinese since. balloon. That's what it was. Yeah. Anyway, I think they I think it might have been locked. a circular temperature vortex over the LA area. And I think it's interesting that people out there that think that that is what had happened. Circular temperature yeah. vortex? <laughs> I understand that to die. <laughs> Are you trying to fit in as many syllables as possible? <laughs> <laughs> That's a real thing. Okay, all right, let's get this show well, on the road. The spectrum analyzer to find out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Right on the set. Oh, God. Going live. Well, we are live. Like we are live. <laughs> <laughs> or are we just living? <laughs> We're actually in replay right now. Um, yeah, I guess so. The site is embedded and uploaded. So we are. And you got that site in big quick. Uh, so good. <laughs> Facebook is. Facebooking. Uh -huh. And uh, it's not updated. Uh, is it Zuckerberging? Yeah, there's a new website. The new thing. There we go. We're live. Okay, that's live. Facebook is live. You're all live out there. Alive from off center. 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 Anybody remember that show? Live from off sort center. Sort of. Sort of. It was like a crazy video submission show on, on PBS back in the 80s. And it was <laughs> all know. like people. I was in Memphis. Our local stuff was a dominated PBS. It looked like local access, cable mm -hmm. access. But, See, it, but it was like art, different. performance art. It was really right cool. Now. We had we had Mr. Goodbody. <laughs> okay. Yes. <laughs> Slim yes, Goodbody. Creepy. All right. Are we ready to roll here? Yeah. Good to go. All right. Ms. Merlino is in your control. Three, two. Hey, it's time for voiceover body shop. How's everybody doing today? We've been gone for a little while. Yes. And when we came back, I'm like, got to have somebody who's really good and really funny and will allow me to just sit here and let him do what he does. And dependable. Uh, exactly. And handsome. John Bailey is our guest tonight. <laughs> the epic voice guy. That's just, just, just epic voice guy. I yeah. used to have the epic voice guy. People thought it was the pick voice guy. So oh. the H E E, the epic oh, guy. Gotcha. Really? <laughs> really? I was like, people still say the. <laughs> Thanks, Shakespeare. See what I mean? <laughs> get your brand name right. Right. Yeah. If you got questions for John or if you got tech questions for George and I, put them in the chat room, depending on where you might actually be, whether you're on Facebook Live or YouTube Live. Mm -hmm. You know, we can do it on LinkedIn now. I we think can? We, yeah. Oh. It's now allowing us three streams. We can go on LinkedIn. Whoa. We haven't done that yet, but next we time we will. It. Raven, carrier pigeon, yeah. fax machine, smoke signals. Exactly. All those things. All modern day technology. Are you ready? You ready, George? I'm ready. You ready, John? I was born ready. All right. It's time for voiceover body shop. 
right now. It's time for VoiceOver Body Shop. Brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, the home of Harlan Hogan's signature products. Source Elements, the makers of Source Connect. VoiceOver Heroes, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your voice actor website doesn't have to be a pain in the butt. VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for voiceover success. And World Voices, the industry association of freelance voice talent. And now, here's your hosts, Dan and George. Hello there. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. BS. Most definitely tonight. Putting the BS in VOBS. That's right. (sighs) Got to get you to do more liners (laughs) while you're here. Anyway, I don't do drugs, so I'm not getting any lines. Oh, liners. Oh, liners. Sorry. Okay. John Bailey, epic voice guy. See, I took out the D. There you go. See? It was already edited out already. There you go. Uh, I, on social media as an actor, voice actor, content creator, social influencer, and stand-up comedian. With such vocal talent, he has taken Hollywood by storm. In other words, you got to have the talent if you come into town. And you definitely got the talent. So welcome back to VoiceOver Body Shop. It's nice to be here in person again. I, it's <laughs> nice to be anywhere in person, to tell <laughs> yeah. you the truth. So, I mean, how long has it been since you've been on? I think we had you on once during the pandemic. or I think it's been like a year or something. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, we have you on once a year. because <laughs> <laughs> Right after Ground Dog Day. Right. And this is the day. So, anyway. Daily day. Yeah. yeah so. Right next to International Women's Day. <laughs> yes. The, now, the, the, the thing is, and we'll lead off with this and we'll just roll away from it. I love that neither one of them knew it was my birthday like two right. days ago. <laughs> Happy oh, birthday. It's too late. To too late. You. Nobody even knew. I thought he would leave this. So it was your birthday now. Yeah, okay. Three three. Okay. okay. Anyway. Uh, <clears throat> mine's today. Happy birthday. Hey, hey, it's Jeff, Jeff Holman's birthday. How do you like oh, that? Birthday, birthday, Jeff. Jeff. It got overshadowed. Happy birthday. Oh, <laughs> oh boy. You guys are all Pisces. I don't know. Pisces right. or what? It's, it's kind of fishy. I'm sorry. Pisces is oh. a fish. Yeah. Because my kids won too. I That's fine. Okay. Anyhow. Welcome back. <laughs> Thanks for having me back. There seems to be a little less of you than the last time you were here. No, I got this suit. Uh, oh, we got a lot of clothes I, on today. I mean, you look great. Oh, you mean the weight? Yeah. yeah. It was a little bit less. How much did you lose? Uh, total, I lost 150 from heaviest to thinnest, but I bumped back up a little bit, but still kept off the most of it. That's outstanding. Still, still working on it. That's, that's, that's how you keep yourself healthy. Um, and I'm aiming for 163. I figure that's a... My well, I would kill to do- be one sixty. The doctor says that I'm supposed to weigh between one fifty and one seventy five. Right in the middle is one sixty three, so that's the goal. Ah. But I'm lingering around the, the two hundred mark right now. So all right, all right. So, so got a ways to go. All right, so we're if we were on a seesaw, we'd be ba- balanced. Yeah, pretty good. Okay, well that's cool. I just wear more spanks than you. <laughs> Is this your booth outfit? Because that's a lot of poly, right? Uh, I do content in this. I go to uh, Red Carpets with my beautiful girlfriend Hunter over there um, in this outfit. This is like it's half casual. I got the got the purple Converse. The thank you, the Mad Brand Company, and my girlfriend for the amazing uh, custom colored hat. You can get this epic hat uh, for code Epic Twenty on the Mad Brand Co. And, Mad and I went to explain, Mad explain, Brand. explain. Oh, thank you for that. Um, and then uh, this stuff, uh, it's a wrap in Burbank. It's got like oh yeah, yeah. left over from some store prom. prices yeah, look from some shoot right? film or tv something <laughs> right. it was like really cool to get all this stuff for cheap yeah. all the reasons yeah, to be in hollywood i know you're making us look like total snobs <laughs> well i, I looked like kind of i comic picked book the oldest from shirt from my closet <laughs> and i wanted to look better than you guys so. <laughs> you succeeded it was my birthday so i yeah. i Aww. decided to put my birthday suit on yeah, yeah. now i remember we, when we first had you on actually when we george and i first started doing the show from here as opposed to Buffalo and Santa Monica. Yeah, back when it was West Coast Body Shop, right? Yeah. East West. East West. East West Body, West body, West body right. Shop. And you were talking about you wanted to come out to Hollywood. Mm-hmm. And then you seemed to be like commuting back and forth yeah. for a while. And then you made the big leap forward. Or if you were in China, the great leap forward. <laughs> 
and you're here and you've had a lot of success. It's been I actually, do. it's been very impressive to watch what you've done since you came here. And you're a great model for a lot of other people that are like, should I come to Hollywood? <laughs> but you got to have yeah. the talent. And this guy has the talent. You also have to have the drive. To and that was keep, the other you thing. You have to grind and grind. And yeah. Grind. Most people just don't have that. They right. just don't want to. They'll sit there and they'll stick their hands and they'll sit on them and they're like, it'll all come to me. Now. You know, um, I transitioned here instead of just dropping everything and going for multiple reasons, some of them personal, but smart. Um, overall, I felt it was better to kind of get a feel for the land, try to see who I could make yeah. contact with to see like, how does it, I've talked to Rob Paulson about like, what areas are the most affordable to live in? How much does it cost for you not to live here? No, not his neighborhood. No, not his neighborhood. Well, he, you know, he had thrown out this a ginormous number. Like he's like it, it easily a quarter. Of, you have to to gross a quarter of a million dollars to live comfortably in LA. And I was like, that seems ridiculous considering I used to make you know twenty five, twenty seven grand a year in my old job. Right. And he's not wrong to live comfortably with a family the size that I have. But most people are using two incomes. Yeah. And at the time, I only had the one. So then now I've actually got some help, so it's a little, little bit easier. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, I had to kind of see where the most affordable places were. If it was actually going to be worth the transition here, would I be busy enough doing things to make it worth coming? And my agent, when I was, this is when I was very new to the agency. So I mean, nothing negative about my agency. I freaking love them. They've helped me achieve so, so much. So I'm extremely internally grateful to them. But when I first signed with them, you know, I'd been with them for a minute, but I was, I was, a uh, you know, remote talent and I didn't yeah. have a lot of that. Right. And they had said, which kind of sounded like a Hollywood thing, like, oh, if you lived here, you'd book more. And I was like, this kind of, kind of sounds like a cop out a little bit. Yeah. And so, and I was doing very badly or mediocre at best with them at the beginning. And I kind of figured that might have to come to pay with your, pay your dues or, you know, you, you're yeah. the new guy on the poll. You don't get submitted with everything when they have guys that are just, they're, they're booking people. Right. But then I moved here and I was like, okay, let's just see if that's accurate. And sure enough, as soon as I got here, like it just, it was booking after booking and it's, got to where it was i mean I'm, i have vocal stress right now because i'm mm -hmm. booking so many things close together yeah. which is a good problem to have but also you don't want to overdo it either right yeah. just because you can't do, do it doesn't mean you should like okay well i'm not going to sacrifice my my instrument yeah which it would be long-term work for a few extra bookings here so right. usually i found when you get to a certain point they'll work with you and they're like right. oh well if you can't do that we don't want you to blow your voice out we'll just put it off a day or two or we'll reschedule for next week they're, they're very kind and considerate about mm -hmm. it but they they wouldn't have been back in the day like when you were a rookie like psh, you got 50 other guys that can do it better than you right you know so you yeah. have to kind of build up that john can do it he can do it fast you do it right and how many years has it been now uh it's been 15 15 years since i booked my very first job yeah it's been probably 11 or 12 of that that i've been full-time because mm -hmm. I kind of jumped in a little early. And, right. I, and then you made the move to L.A. But yeah. Five? I didn't make the choice to go. I did not make the choice to go full time by choice. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> that was because the economy crashed and uh -huh. the company I worked for went bankrupt and I didn't have another option. That happened to uh, a lot of folks. Plan B was voice. So it was like, well, it was well, I had only been auditioning when I wasn't at work. Yeah. You know, so I'm like, well, between four and midnight, I can't do anything. So. Right. And what little bit I did audition for, you had to be available during the day hours to, you know, and my cutoff time was like four o'clock. So that kind of limited me on how much I could do. So uh, I was still booking like one to three jobs. I was like, this is, this must be horrible. How can you make a career out of this? Right. And then the, the, the engineer who sold me the microphone I still use now, the one that you had <laughs> told me how to, to Change replace the, the tube. tube. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> he had said, dude, there's been people that have been with us for five years and never booked a single job. And, I, and then familiar. something that my girlfriend said earlier today about, you know, people claim, but well, how, it, it seems to be important how much experience you have, like how many years you've been doing this job, but you could be crappy at a job <laughs> and be doing it 15, 20 years. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there's people that had not booked a single job. Could be, I've been a voice actor for five years. But that doesn't mean they're good. Right. You know? <laughs> they're, they're living on, on mac and cheese and rice. Uh, yeah. Noodles. And they're probably still not quit their day job, which is my number one recommendation when I coach, don't quit your day job. This is not something you can dive in full time. Like I'm quitting my job today and I'm going to be a full time voice actor by tomorrow. No, you won't. <laughs> yeah. 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 Also, don't start in debt. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one too. <laughs> yeah. I learned that one in the life insurance business. Don't start in debt. Mm -hmm. Really, really tough. Mm -hmm. So, what type of type of work did you start booking, and and what did um, you do to maintain doing that? Well, I I was told by somebody that I will I will not out uh, publicly <laughs> because they are very big in this business. But somebody had told me a long, long time ago, back in the uh, Do you remember Zurich? Uh, Rick Party, yeah, in the, Florida, the, his yeah, original yeah, website, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that was the site that I first like. That's the first online voiceover site back in the day. And uh, somebody in the forums on there, they were like, "Oh, post your demos here for critique." 
Uh, I was brand new. I was very young, and I did. Voiceover Universe. Yeah, VoiceoverUniverse.com. Yeah, yeah. Which is still and, around. Uh, uh, yeah, Facebook. and uh, yeah. I had, uh, yeah, it's transposed to to a site now instead of being its own website. Yeah. Um, but I had posted up, you know, just impressions of characters that other people had done, not knowing any better, because I was still pretty, I think I was 18, 19 years old. Right. And um, so somebody very big, just like, you'll never get anywhere in this business doing impressions, doing sound likes for other people. You're ten to $15,000 away from every booking your first gig. You're, it's going to be 10 to 15 years before you book anything. Like so really harsh Ooh, stuff. Right. And I'm not going to say who it was, but this is a guy who was well known for doing sound likes for other actors right. that, have, uh, that are no longer I'll, here. Or that, you know, it, yeah. And I was like, well, at the time, though, I was a kid. I'm like, what the frick? So I just jumped in anyway. I'm like, I'm going to freaking show this guy. <laughs> I could do this. And he's not wrong. He's just not completely right either. There is no room in, in voiceover for the profession for doing sound alikes and doing, and, and doing impressions, at least. In social media, there's a huge room for that because uh, it's become a, its own genre of people doing doing impressions right but and some of them are there yeah, yeah and yeah. some of them have actually made it all the way to actually i mean brian hull brian hull's mm -hmm. got all the way up to hotel transylvania 4 being like the main one of the main characters mm -hmm. uh adam sandler's sound alike mm -hmm. and uh so i'm not saying it's not a route i'm just saying it's a route that very few take and succeed very much it's yeah. usually a Oh, this person has two million followers on social media. We should hire them to do this thing. And but they're not their full time career is not voiceover. They're having to right. put a lot out on social media just to, to maintain that. That kind of stuff is fine, you know. But I'll, I'll give you a perfect example. Um, when I get online and I read, you know, baby got back, but in Winnie the Pooh's voice, <laughs> oh, well, uh, my anaconda don't want none unless you've got buns, hon. You know, that's funny. That's TikTok worthy. <laughs> but in voiceover, there's very few people that they're going to call when they made the Winnie the Pooh movie, besides Jim, to do to do Winnie the Pooh's voice. And that sounds right. so much like the original that no one knows it's not Jim. Right. And that's the difference between they couldn't get a hold of Jim. Right. And they also need to want someone to do you and McGregor's voice. And I happen to do both. So I filled in for you and I'm for Pooh. For the trailers, right. and that's a full-time scale job pay that nobody will even know about unless they actually heard the spot and be like, I, I made that, you know, nobody, most people would not hear the difference. Right. And then they hire for the final spot. They'll get Jim and Ewan to come in and do their own, or maybe if it's, it's expedient, they'll leave mine in. But there's usually no residuals for that kind of work. But it was, it's something where that ability to sound like someone else to the point where people can't tell the difference has turned into a paying career. But now, I'm, well, you guys, I'm curious because this is you know, this is a hardware software show. I'm curious your guys' thoughts on AI because I've seen a lot of crazy, interesting stuff with AI voiceover and with the fake technology where ADR and Loop Group is going to be, I mean... Going to get wiped yeah, out. Yeah, it, it could be. I mean, because the AI voices are okay enough where some things you could fill in where you wouldn't need somebody to do it. Yeah, revoicer. And they don't need anybody to reshoot anything. They can literally have the actor come in, say a new line, and they can make their face say those original words and edit it. Right. So all these two things are going to be harmful towards my career. Loop groups and ADR, all that stuff where it's like, we need this stuff this fast, this fast. When, if they have software that can do that, what's the point of hiring somebody, no matter how good they are? Right. Yeah, I mean, Respeacher has like an actual ADR mix. Mm -hmm. talking about how she's using Respeacher mm -hmm. to fix the voices on stuff so she doesn't have to bring the actors in yep that's it's good enough yeah and most people just most studios that this is if it's good enough why spend 800 dollars when they could do it for free right the thing is the thing is though with ai you still have to have a pilot yeah right no matter how ai the thing is you still have to have somebody that knows how to drive it and mm -hmm. program it just like drums right when electronic drums came out they were stupid and terrible, right? <laughs> they were just, inch, inch. all they could do was yep. techno, right? But now you can hire a drum programmer who can do very impressive drums, but they have to know how to program those drums, and it's actually difficult. Hmm. So AI voice, I look at it the same way. Like, if you want really high-quality AI voice, you're going to have to get a really high-quality, you know, AI voice programmer. Right. By the time you do that, maybe you could have just hired the actor. Because yeah. then they can just bang out those lines, like yeah, much much yeah. quicker too. So there's, I think what's going to gonna happen um, is that they're going to use that technology to eliminate the scratch tracks. Sure. No. Because then you won't need to hire somebody like me right. to do the temp stuff. They'll still hire the final actor for whatever, but they won't need anybody to do. They'll just need something that's kind of basic, 
but most of them still, especially with animated movies, there's been a few that I've worked on where they don't have anything made yet. It's all just audio. Right. And they're still just storyboards at that point. Right. And yeah. they'd rather have the actors come in because AI cannot match that level of improv. And exactly. They just can't think That's that quickly. Improv. You can just write out what you can say. Right. You know, but you never know. But you run through something two or three times, you get something funnier and different each time. Yeah. AI just can't compete with that. No, it I was just curious to bring it up. Yeah, well, no, no, sure. there's no emotion. There's no. I, I mean, they can. It all kind of sounds basically the same. It sounds like a person, it just, right? You know. And if you're going to put emotion in it, that means another model or another thing you have right. to program into the system yep. to give it the emotion, which means it's not authentic because it's just one version of that emotion, and it just it can't respond as quickly. Mm -hmm. it, there's no doubt it's going to be used and it already is being used all the time on YouTube. And oh yeah. Instagram. There's, there's right. a fake one out there know. at me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's pretty bad though. Yeah. If you've ever seen <laughs> Mr. Puzzles, it's pretty horrible <laughs> on the floor below you are so cheers. <laughs> it's, it's, they had AI write this horror movie and I can't really get mad at it because all the voices in it are AI voices, but the story is ridiculously funny. <laughs> Like, they just fed it like 50 horror movies yeah <laughs> and, but at least it's like and then did all the and let ai and then the, the animations like shrek 2000 <laughs> level <laughs> <laughs> so i uh, i mean it's horrible and it's not me but it kudos because it's freaking hilarious <laughs> yeah so but, but it, it will be good for fixing things yeah. you know if you if they're still going to use the live actors to do it and they're not available yeah. or they need to fix something really quick then yeah they can use ai to do that but yeah, i yeah. feel like it's going to cause people like me to have to make more competitive rates to compete with software right yeah. well what what are you planning on doing to get ahead of this because i think that's you know if you if you see the <sighs> future hard to say i don't really i don't know what else i can do except just be so good at my job that i'm indispensable you know just be yeah. the go-to guy that can do it so much faster and it sound better right you know or know the people who do um i'm actually talking to i can't remember who it is off the top of my head now i'm gonna i'm gonna hate this later <laughs> but a friend of mine was oh it was a uh, holly fields okay. was talking about doing a um i don't know if you know her from jag and she's she's yeah. drew, drew barrymore and cameron diaz is sound alike her face oh. can physically transform into drew barrymore when she does the voice wow. uh <laughs> she's basically retired at this point but she had talked about doing their own like loop group thing and I like the idea of like why why hire an outside company and just hire, have a people have have people that a group of people that already do ADR right. and do it really really well and just cut through all the who can I cast and we're just like we well, you know a yeah. group that does all that right yeah there, here's a list of all the actors you can if you need or the crowd you know material I mean we already we already loop so we already know the rules we already know how to do it quickly and easily and there's so many rules if you ever have a chance to if you're a voiceover or interested in voiceover take johnny gidcombe's class johnny gidcombe is the best adr teacher out there uh she's actually the one that that recommended him to me uh and he works on big films for marvel and fox and you know some of the biggest stuff out there and uh it's really well done and if you don't know what it is you should look up uh hugh jackman logan adr it is worth a Google, as Zach mm. Galifianakis would say. Except he'd say it. It's worth the Google. <laughs> he'd run through that whole fight scene, and he does the whole thing. He gets he he gets physical, but just physical enough where it works for the audio, right. and re, and does it. He gives one hundred and ten percent, and it's insane to watch. Uh, and when people will say like, "What do you do?" I'm like, "Watch this video. <laughs> I do this, but not quite as good as he does." Yeah. <laughs> If you are just joining us, you've missed a lot already. Our guest is John Bailey, who is epic voice guy, because uh, he is an, an epic voice guy. A guy of epic voices is what I've been. Guy of epic yeah. voices? Oh, okay. That's too long. Right. See, the, 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 the whole brand thing started with, uh, with Honest Trailers having the disclaimer at the end, uh, give us something in the comments for our epic movie trailer voice guy to say, or every, trailer, every movie trailer voice to say. And I was like, I need to take that and kind of condense it down. Right. And I was like, epic voice man. And somebody recommended, I've got epic voice guy. I'm like, I call epic voice guy. And it's kind of caught on at that point. Right. But then it became almost synonymous with, aren't you honest trailers guy? Or aren't you the guy that works for honest or aren't you from honest trailer? I was like, I don't like these prepositions. Right. Very prepositionalist. Uh, I was like, I don't want to be known for just the one thing that I do. I mean, my career expands everything from cartoon to anime to toys to sound alikes for A-list celebrities. And yet I'm getting typecast or only people only know me for this one thing. So I just, I was like, how can I spin mm. this around where people are like, oh, this is a guy who does voices. <laughs> like, right. So just a guy, I'm a guy who does epic, and a guy who does epic voices. There you go. Right. Are you I still, mean, are you still doing trailers? Uh, yeah. So I'm actually working on Dungeons and Dragons right now. Excellent. That's pretty cool. Um, but you don't get a lot of those trailers, but people... This is a question you probably get a lot. Is there a lot of voiceover still in trailer work? Because people don't hear it, but right. they don't ever think about where they don't hear it. They only don't hear it in the movie theaters. 
Right. And not on every single trailer. If you if you pay attention, there's a pattern. You will hear voiceover in kids' movies and you'll hear voiceover in comedy. You'll mm -hmm. still and if you anything else, you'll probably hear the title or the rating at the end. And Sounds that's funny. it. Yeah. Friday at seven. No, that's right. that's promo. <laughs> it's like this Friday in theaters, rated R. You know, that that'll be the only part you'll hear the voiceover on. Right. But what they're not thinking about is every time there's radio, Spotify, there's like how many different versions of Spotify something out there right. where it's a music app? They still yeah. do ads on those and online, the pre-roll ads for YouTube. So if you're a stuff voice on, TikTok, on a trailer Twitter, campaign, you're going to be the voice. Yeah, you can you could literally platforms. book each individual platform. Yeah. Either they'll do a buyout and be like, you're, we're doing all the trade. This is for all online use. So they'll be like specifically, this trailer is for Twitter. This trailer is for TikTok. This trailer is for Instagram. But if your voice gets on one of those, kind of, there's a lot of money still to be made that, that mm -hmm. way. Right. Um, this is the, the example I always use when Iron Man first came out, um, Ashton Smith booked it and Ashton Smith's easy to spot because Ashton Smith does this thing at the end of his sentences and he's fully aware of it, um, that he goes down at the end of every sentence mm -hmm. and he booked the Iron Man, uh, commercial and or the trailer. And it was, it also included a national car campaign because of Tony Stark's car oh. and a Snickers campaign. And nice. a Dr. Pepper campaign and a Taco Bell campaign and a McDonald's Happy Meal campaign. All <laughs> those things all came in. They use the same trailer guy for every single one. You're talking about national spots with residuals plus dozens of trailers across several different platforms. That's a massive amount of money. I've booked right. a few campaigns like that, even small ones on movies that you wouldn't like Smurfs too. You wouldn't think that was that big. I did 27 spots for that. Whoa. For Hotel Transylvania, I did 56 something spots. And that was ADR, but it was the same parade as trailer. Right. And it's like, there's a lot out there. You just don't know yeah. because you don't see, not everybody hears it in the same place. They're like, oh, I heard this at one place. Or they go to the theater and like, I didn't hear any trailer voices. Those guys don't have any job. Right. <laughs> well, well, there's clearly a lot of stuff being pumped out of Hollywood and it all has to be yeah. promoted that way. And then there's all these people that are doing ripoff versions that they'll hear something honest trailer ish and they'll get yeah. like we need a guy that sounds kind of like that and you'll go to the movie theater before the thing starts it's like one m and m <laughs> you know it's like <laughs> right. all the little things before the actual trailer start yeah. they're still using the trailer voice yeah right it's true yeah if you've got a question for john now would be a great time to ask it because he loves to answer questions <laughs> yeah i love it yeah <laughs> <laughs> i have children so i love answering questions <laughs> <laughs> Throw in the chat room right now, whether you're on Facebook or on YouTube Live. And Jeff Holman, who is sitting right over here, I can almost kick him from here. Uh, we'll Not without knocking a thousand cores and microphones. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> taking the show offline. That's why I said almost. <laughs> anyway, if you got a question, throw it in the chat room because we'll get to your questions in the next segment. Well, Which all that trailer that. parody stuff turned you into this parody trailer voice guy. Right. Which then turned yeah. you into this parody, parody trailer voice guy in a commercial which is it's it's weird how it works because <laughs> how that happen? when i first started with them i didn't quite get the concept i thought that they were trying to trick people into thinking this was the real trailer for the movie like they just pulled up some old trailer right. and then after a few seconds you realize oh they're actually you know poking fun at all the obvious plot holes or whatever it is and then after the first one they're like it sounds too much like a real trailer i'm like oh i get it i'm making fun i'm making fun of my own self <laughs> <laughs> right. i'm not doing a real trailer i'm making fun of my my own trailer voice. Yeah. So what are you working on? I mean, what's your day like? You were saying your voice is worn out. I mean, you're, you're, you're yeah, like, well, like, uh, what kind of hours you're working. You, you guys get, get the, the news first. How, I don't know if you want to call it news or not, since it's under non-disclosure agreement, but after 15 years from my very first booking, I finally booked a recurring character in a network animated series. And we cool. Out of that. Wow. Excellent. Um, I'm working for them every week. Uh, I'm also working for Marvel and for Disney now for multiple projects, which is a really cool. They Marvel freaking really cool to work with. Great studio. Um, they got their act together. Yeah, it was. It, I, I wish I could tell you how cool it was. Um, yeah. And still doing dubbing, still doing trailers. Um, I did the voice for a toy recently, which was really, really cool. I wish I could say what it was, but I don't know when it's going to be out. All I know is I will be buying multiple of them myself <laughs> um and i haven't booked a toy voice in a really long time so that's pretty cool that was actually one of my very first gigs 15 years ago i was doing the voice for really me. it didn't come out for like three or four years but yeah there's a oh, few wow. star wars toys yeah it was fun to go my mom actually found one in yeah. freaking a, a goodwill or something and bought it for me like oh you found it hey, and there's my voice in there <laughs> that's something my dad would do <laughs> it was only three dollars <laughs> it was still in box though it wasn't mint oh wow it wasn't in my okay. but... all right <laughs> Not collecting. All these nerds are like, let's sell box in one of us. Get up in the box. <laughs> yes. I mean, that's a good, uh, I think it's really important in a career if you can 
put yourself in a lot of different yeah. places and a lot of different genres. I mean, you're I feel like you have to in order yeah. to, to in order to survive <laughs> one man. Um, to be flexible. You you yeah. have to be yeah. good at more than one thing or be the very best at one thing in order to be able to make enough money without any other career or side gig or whatever. Um, yeah. I mean, my, my social media has blown up since my personal life has changed. My, my career has also blown up. Um, but mm. I'm not seeing that those numbers translate <laughs> into, mm. into money. Yeah. You know, I have videos that are in the 11 million range Two or three of them now. Haven't monetized? And them? they're monetized. There's just no money coming. Like, I'm looking at, like, oh, your estimated value is $1,200. And I'm looking at this, like, you've paid 38 cents. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Is this, Bonkers. Is there some kind of fee for being viral? Like, <laughs> is that on YouTube? That's on TikTok and oh, on TikTok. Instagram. Oh, I have several yeah. of them on both of those. Yeah, TikTok's going to go, I think, the, the way of. Um, you know, well, the TikTok is, and, they're not paying their talent. That's the problem. Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, no, there's some people on there that have figured out how to do it and they're making really good money. Mm -hmm. And it's just not me. They're not making it on TikTok. I mean, my girlfriend's yeah. over there kind of like looking around and they're like, not me. But yeah, she's, she's got a fraction of my followers. It's still amazing though. She's getting, she's in the 50 K range and she's making more money than I am with the 740. I think today when I checked 740 K and I'm making pennies. You have to use it. I, have, I just don't know what I'm, I don't know what I'm yeah, doing wrong. You have to just use it. It's only for marketing. It really right? is. It really is just to like let people know that I exist. I yeah. feel like that data, those numbers look good for yeah. potential like clients that you know. Oh, this guy's got well known and right. so much. I mean, yeah. we'll go somewhere. Like we went to Universal Studios a couple of days ago, and some guy with a mask and I have no idea. He's like, I feel like I know you. I worked with you or something before. And then she goes like, she's like, Epic Voice guy's like, oh, I do know that guy. I'm like, crap. <laughs> 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 Once again, we're talking with John Bailey, who does everything, apparently. I'm a uh, Swiss Army knife, man. You have to be. And right. on camera commercials. Yeah, yeah. very rarely. Uh, and not a, <laughs> my, my agent thought that just because I booked a couple, they're like, we're going to be your on camera talent. I'm like, yeah, okay, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, I remember the Toyota commercial you did. Mitsubishi. Mitsubishi. Uh, some Japanese yeah, model. I was going to say Honda. <laughs> Gets off. We, we all just, remember we did a John Bailey, Bailey well, trivia really game. Effective. You guys would be failing so hard. I forgot my birthday. <laughs> I was in a Hyundai Toyota commercial. <laughs> it was the most forgettable branding campaign ever. <laughs> well, it was like 2018 though, so it's been well, a few years. I remember the campaign well. I just don't remember what car it was for. Yeah, Sorry, exactly. But it was it was, it was Cross. I still remember. <laughs> Anyway, we'll great. talk about that and a few, a few other things along with your questions if you just throw them in the chat room right now yeah. and we will get to those right after this important message from all of our wonderful sponsors so don't go away we'll be right back with john bailey this is bill ratner and you're enjoying voiceover body shop with dan leonard and george widham vobs.tv Have you noticed the increasing demands of clients regarding our home studios? Are they at a professional level to record V over broadcast? I've seen several now demanding cardioid condenser microphones along with AD converters at 24-bit 441K. Now that eliminates the majority of USB microphones. The VO1A and the MicPort Pro solve that problem. You know how I'm always saying that all the equipment we use is designed for making music? The VO1A Harlan Hogan Signature Series Studio Condenser Mic is tailored to the unique needs of voiceover recording. And the MicPort Pro 3 from Centrance has been the industry standard audio interface for over a decade, at home and on the road. The new MicPort Pro 3 brings incredible features like the new Mic Preamp with 65 dB of crystal clear gain, USB-C jacks with adapter for compatibility with standard USB ports, and a stunning headphone amplifier with a super convenient gain switch. You can get them both at voiceoveressentials.com, where you'll see all their great products made just for us VO people. It's time to talk about Source Elements, the creators of Source Connect and Source Nexus, which is really getting a lot more attention lately. What the heck is Source, Source Nexus anyway? What I'm supposed to be Nexus? remain professional as I'm fondled by my <laughs> guest. Um, Source Connect and Source Elements. These are the tools that are being used in so many pro studios because of workflow. Everybody loves workflow, don't they? Don't you love that buzzword? Well, that is really a big part of why it's such a, a very well-loved tool in all the best and top commercial studios. But what Source Nexus does, we've already talked about Source Connect a thousand times. Source Nexus is the glue that connects different systems into one studio. 
right? It used to be everything was a rack of boxes, right? You had an ISDN box and a phone patch box, maybe another ISDN box. You'd have all these racks of gear. That's the old days. Everything now is in the box. It's all software and you need a way to tie everything together and bring it into your DAW. In this case, it's Pro Tools. <laughs> So that's why Source Nexus is so critical. You might want to check it out. Even if you're a voice actor, the ability to route audio in and out of things and playback and do loops and all this stuff is very handy. Anyway, if you want to get set up, go over to source-elements.com. You can get a 15-day free trial of really everything they make and give them a try and see what works best for you. They have the best service in the business, and we love them. Thanks for the support, Source Elements. Let's move on so we can get to more crazy questions with John Bailey. Hey there, I'm David H. Lawrence, the 17th, and with my company, VO Heroes, and my team of coaches and my community of voiceover talent, we guide voiceover actors along their journey. And you may be watching VOBS here, uh, and not nearly as far along as many of the other people who are watching. You may not even have started yet. And we actually specialize in helping you do just that. So if you're watching all the stuff going on here on VOBS and going, I have no idea what they're talking about. I don't know, but I really want to do this. I'd really like to help you. Please go to VOHeroes.com slash start. That's VOHeroes.com slash start. And you can take our Getting Started in VoiceOver class, which tells you everything you need to get started as a voice talent. And I'd love to hold your hand along the way and help you with that journey. Again, voheroes.com slash start. That's voheroes.com slash start. You're still watching VLBS? <laughs> And we are back. Are we back? We are we back. We sure are. And we're also front. Uh, we've got John Bailey with us tonight, and we are talking about what it really takes to succeed here in, in La La Land, which is everybody wants to come to Hollywood. And I... Um, You're going to make us sink into the ocean. Go away. <laughs> Actually, the staff... It may have the that. rain. It's like we're already thickened up. The, the, I feel like it's just ready to fall in now. The stats would say the opposite. Actually, people have been leaving California in droves. Oh, oh, so. Yeah. It's it's it makes us lighter or more buoyant. Then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I keep getting all these calls from my friends in Buffalo saying, You're snowed in in LA? I'm like, no. Yeah, that, <laughs> those three or four flakes kept me from getting out of my driveway. <laughs> they don't know what a valley is. It's fine. That's right. Absolutely. <laughs> Once again, if you got a question for John Bailey about anything at all, no, uh, it's not anything at all. That's, he's, the, no, that, that's, that's really open for some going. really bad questions. <laughs> <laughs> Throw them in the chat room right now. We'll we'll get to those questions in a seven second. inches. My microphone is seven inches long. I'm glad you filled in the rest. Of yeah, the <laughs> I already played without to. even being asked. <laughs> All righty, <laughs> got the first question is from Glenn Lindner, Mr. Widom. You have the honors. Yes, Glenn Lindner says, "What to know? Want to know? I can't say the first word in the sentence. Want to know the proper protocol for marketing as well as getting representation." Point. <laughs> if only we all knew boy that's a one t you question don't know. yeah somebody's very one <laughs> <laughs> i don't even know well you can purchase coaching from <laughs> <John Bailey. laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> uh that's a hmm. there there's no specific way to do something my my best advice that i give when i do coach which you can buy right now um but i give you a lot more details about what i'm going to say uh, is to just kind of have your brand be the same across the board. Whatever whatever you have, if it's, for example, if it's VOBS, if it's VOBS, you have VOBS.com, you have at VOBS on platform, platform, platform. Everything's at VOBS. Don't make it at VOBS34723 and make sure that your profile picture is the same on every single page. Make sure that your demos are done, your resume is done, your site looks like you've done, like it make it look like you are a professional voice actor. Mm -hmm because you're not going to get hired if you don't. If you go, if you have a website that looks like it was made by a fifth grader and it has one demo on it and it's a character demo, people are not most likely not going to hire you unless you're willing to do some things that you may not be proud of later. So, so I suggest having a commercial demo, having a character demo and making sure that it sounds like you know what you're doing and it looks like you know what you're doing. Even if you don't have that many followers, if you have that brand down, the profile picture looks the same. People know how to find you very, very simply and easily. That is the, that is the foundation for what was the word he used again? Protocol. Pro, for the, for, for yeah. the protocol of 
getting yourself out there. As far as getting representation, there's a lot of people that don't even have representation that do fine. Representation is a matter of choice, not necessarily necessity. Uh, 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 good example, Bob and September Carter. I know you guys know them, right? Over oh, in yeah. Atlanta. Mm -hmm. September has made her whole living off of voice123.com without even needing representation. She's doing that mm -hmm. herself and making very good money at it, booking some very big jobs, very big games, big movies, big TV shows. And you don't have to have representation. If you think you need it, maybe you're not ready. <laughs> good point you know uh, i didn't even know i needed an agent at first i just did i did whatever was thrown my way and every time an opportunity came my way if it didn't you know violate how i personally felt or just seem scammy or whatever i would be like sure i'll give it a shot and if it didn't work out then i learned my lesson right. if it did work out you know and it just led to big break after big break but then my first manager which i didn't even know vo most voice actors don't have a manager so mm -hmm. like i said there's there's multiple ways that people get represented so i had a manager uh second i was kind of self-represented at first manager second and then an agent so and then from that agent came agents plural outside of you know around the country so, so when did you fire a manager uh i've never fired a manager oh. before i switched managers he actually recommended me to my current one oh, okay. because he he wasn't a manager himself like it was not his job right. he was a trailer company right so he just he just heard talent and he's like i think we could work with you i think he could work with our producer sure and just kind of nailed down that epic voice guy voice that's not that's not Don LaFontaine or Ashton Smith. That's like my own version, you know? Yeah, right, and uh, right. that's that first year I was at that. That's basically what he did. But he he had his own business to run, and he knew that he couldn't really manage my career the way it needed yeah. to be managed and run his company. So he found the best in the business. business excuse that's me. good. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. all I got to have now. Yeah. Good. yeah. So in other words, it's a job. Yeah. It's almost like it's a career or something. <laughs> I mean, the voicing stuff, that's the fun <laughs> stuff that we get to do. But the actual finding of work yeah. is really where you've got to put all the effort in because once you're inside the booth, you know who you are and yeah. what you're going to And there's just, there's so many options now for getting work online without an agent. It's just, right. you, you, a lot of people think that, that they have to have that because they just right. don't know any better. They just think, oh, I have to go in. And I don't know if I should even have to say it, but there's this wonderful website called I want to be a voice actor.com. <laughs> I feel like every one of your shows channel. should be say before you ask any questions <laughs> check out I want to be a voice actor dot com literally because the, D Bradley Baker did all the work for us already it's literally the FAQ of voice it really is right it's all one place it really is yeah. Yeah. Are, are you ready you know and, I, and you were ready and you came I, here, you I was hard at. I was I was a good amateur at first I was I knew kind of what I was doing but I did not I did not polish it and perfect it until time and getting coaching and Hmm. I used to laugh at people that were like, you need coaching. I'm like, I'm doing fine without coaching. I don't need other people tell me crap I can find out on the internet for free. Yeah. But then I found out that there's more than one reason to get coaching. And you can find out those reasons by hiring me for, for voiceover coaching. <laughs> well, all right. well, for example, daddy has got to pay for his new Lamborghini. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one example of what a coach did that changed the way you did something. Uh, I'll give a good one. You've got an example on your wall over here. Debbie Derryberry uh, yeah. gave me the, uh, she had me come along. I wasn't participating in the, in the coaching session. I was just there as an observer um, at Ann Ken um place mm -hmm. way out. And far. I don't on, drive that right. far. Cause it's just good. Grief. Sand Ken. I know. <laughs> <laughs> another country is where it feels like yeah. uh and she let me like audit and i learned about pre and post life and i just never heard of that before mm. i'd been doing a little bit of it just naturally with some, some of the things i was just doing automatically which is i started understanding what people's like you have natural ability you have natural talent i was doing some things i just didn't know what they were called and then once i knew about it, it's like oh now i can actually consciously make sure that that's part of how i do my auditions and how right, i you know yeah. Yeah, so yeah. it's important to put the terminology with it. Yeah, and, actually, and then actually have some examples. And I was like, oh, I didn't even think about, you know, the fact that post-life and pre-life, sometimes you can do both. Sometimes you can do one or the other. The fact that you can use improv and ignore punctuation. There's a lot of things that you can do to change up how you, how you think about do, doing something because you don't have the job yet, you know. And yeah. I, it took me a long time, to, even when I got the job, to be like, can I just try something? You know, can I just do something that came up on my, you know, and Disney and Marvel are just like, uh, this, like the last session I went to Marvel, they're like, John, we really don't need to even give you direction. Just do that. Just do your thing. <laughs> <laughs> just at that point, like we're all going to lunch early guys. There's John Bailey's here. So yeah, I, you have to get to that point where you're that good. And a lot of people don't understand that just because they take one coaching class or one or two coaching classes, they're ready. You know, right. that you can't, you can't learn everything in one or two sessions because the business is always changing. And sometimes you need to get in front of the right people, find the, co the, 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 the coaches that also are casting directors. Cause they're going to want, they're going to know what it is that you need to be doing in order to be cast. And it's not going to be, I can do funny voices or I have a great voice. So I should be a voice actor. I get, I hear that 
at least one to three times a day, sometimes a dozen times a day. Sure. I, I literally did a coaching session yesterday. I do this little 10 minutes of AMA, ask me anything on Fiverr for five bucks because most people just, they don't have my kind of coaching, you know, requirements because my time, like right. I've already lost at least $3,000 just being here for an hour. So, you know, well, we appreciate that. <laughs> That's and, okay. and, they're going to reimburse me. And the check <laughs> the check <bounce. laughs> um, And I was just, I was telling him the exact same thing. I was like, you know, you, you have to like, um, Anyway, you get, you get the point. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, I just people just don't know this stuff, and they just assume. Yeah. I mean, people like, send us. Oh, I have a good voice. You know, or like who said who said that, yeah. and why did you believe them? <laughs> people, people send us sound checks or get oh, yeah. investment collection cup. <laughs> yeah. And I hear these files, and I know exactly who, in that group who has coaches and who doesn't. Yeah. Like you, can the, you can you can oh, yeah. you can tell natural ability. You can tell there's natural talent, sure. but you can tell somebody who knows what they're doing. Yeah. And like I said, there's a lot of great information I could give you, but I cannot give it to you for free. Cause it took me 15 years to learn it. So you will have right. to hire me as a coach in order to learn all the things I can teach you the secrets we, on how to get booked. That's where we all sell. That's where we all sell the services that we have. Exactly. Yeah. We've spent many yeah. years accumulating knowledge. We've been, we spent years stealing this information from other coaches so we could sell it for ourselves. Uh, <laughs> no, no. You've, you've no. And repackage it <laughs> <laughs> with our own name Change and brand the on it. Change the bit. words around. <laughs> We're gonna have a Why circular not? temperature vortex in there. <laughs> Did you drink a truth serum before you came over? Here? I'm always freaking truthful. I, with I know, I know. You're you guys don't. That's way. what. See, that's part of the problem though with with voiceover You're coaching is candid. most people are not blunt, and they they need Charlie Adler coaches. They need people who will rip the bandaid off and not tell them what they want to hear because you're giving people false hope when you tell people like, oh, all you need to do is do more coaching. And, yeah. Well, that might be true, but you need to tell them why, and you right. need to tell them what they are good at and what they are bad at, and not worry about telling them what they are bad at. I've heard people say like, well, if they're, if they're not any good, I was like, why don't you try to be a plumber? I know that's not true. Cause I've heard those same people say, oh, what you really need is my advanced class. And it's only a thousand dollars. So just, you, you can teach people what to do. And if people just don't have that knack, there's the way to tell people that they can't, you right. know, uh, I'll never forget, Al, you know, Alex uh, Weitzman from yes, Charlie Adams sure. group. Yep. He had, a, he had a guy that was on the spectrum come in and he was just not improving. You could tell like he, he had a great voice, mm -hmm. but I only foresaw that guy getting cast as that one particular character. Like that was the voice he could do. He did not have the range to change that and do anything else. Right. Does that mean he'll never do a voiceover? Absolutely not. I think that anybody that wants to, that has the drive and the determination to keep going at it, eventually he could be, I mean, how many celebrities are, are just specifically for the way that they sound? Kristen Shaw is a perfect example. She's in Gravity Falls. She's in Bob's Burgers. She has that specific voice that's it's distinguishable from yeah. all their voices. Right. And nobody can ever really do it. And that's just how she sounds. So there is a place for that person out there. But some people think that, you know, they can do it all. Well, maybe you're just good at one thing. Maybe you're good at maybe you just haven't found that yet. That's why you need to try coaching because there's coaches for every single thing in the industry. Maybe you just need to find your niche. But don't don't quit and give up unless you just be, are told by multiple professionals, "Hey, this is just not something you're good at. Try something else." Right. Because if you if you're if you're banging it at your head against a wall for years and years and years and nothing happens, then you're probably not making any progress. Which means it may just not be something for, that you can do. I do think it does have. I, I do think it's required to have some skill at it, like yeah. just to have some natural talent to it. But I think it's a skill that anybody can learn if they know the techniques and they that's something that they can emulate when they're taught it then you have a shot at this, you know, right. you just, you just have to find a way to make it your own, be unique or do it better than everybody else does. And sometimes that's a very difficult thing, which is why only those people at the very, very top, that little tiny circle book so much because they have learned how to get to that point to be the very best or be the most unique at something. And then once people, the, the people who are making things or casting for things, they know that they're good. They don't even need to, they don't need to audition. They know who they want. Right. It's like this smallest of people. I freaking want those folks. Exactly. That's exactly what Kevin Smith did with He-Man. He's like, I don't even need to guess. I just give me everybody that was from Batman, the animated mm -hmm. series, and we're good to go. <laughs> All right. We got a question from our own Jeff Holman. Jeff, oh. you have the floor. Hey, what does that awesome moniker on your cool hat mean again? This is the Mad Brand Co. This is the M and the B and they do this really cool logo. And this is called the Epic hat that my girlfriend ordered for me for my birthday. It's got my favorite color on it and it kind of goes with everything. So that is pretty cool. Um, they have all kind of cool hats. I'm still waiting for them to make me a non snapback because I like the fitted stuff, mm -hmm. but I do like their logo and they're, they, they send these awesome hats in little wooden crates with a crowbar. You can open it up. I don't know. That's, that's kind of good. See, people like that. I feel like Indiana Jones looking for, you know, it's an unboxing experience. <laughs> exactly. It really is. Now you've been doing some stand up. Yeah. I've been doing stand up for a minute. Grace Newton's wondering who did you coach with for comedy? I didn't. 
He's just like, uh, yeah. So you, these guys probably know because they're LA flappers has this offer where you can do uh, a practice stand up session in front of two or three people who do this, who do stand up comedy professionally. So I was like, well, I'd been there a few times. I'd, I'd been to the, uh, the talk and tune stuff. And I'd been to, um, uh, the other one with the, we talk funny and mm-hmm. I performed there. And while I was there for one of those things, I was like, you know what? I want to sign up for one of these things. I want to sign up for the little coaching that, you know, whatever. So I put my name and number on there like, oh, hey. and then like a week or two went by and they're like, oh, hey, we got a, an opening if you want to come do stand up on such and such a night. And I'm like, okay, cool. So, so how, do you, how do you prepare for that? I mean, you, I you, didn't know. I, uh, I didn't. I never really done stand up before that first time I'd hosted. I'd emceed. Uh, you know, I had um, uh, I had like hosted for like these nerd burlesque you know cosplay contests mm-hmm. kind of whatever stuff whatever right. the convention had me booked for <laughs> i had to like announce their ridiculous names or right. or vote for i had to be a judge uh, so I, i've been on stage and i've done a little sometimes especially with cosplays there's some there's some complicated crap yeah. out there. so getting them on stage sometimes take a hot minute and I, <laughs> so i would like have to fill in some funny whatever stuff and sometimes it would bomb horribly yeah. And but I wasn't really doing stand up. I was just bombing yeah, hardly. Right. Yeah. So I kind of like found some funny stories that happened that were real life stories that I kind of had polished over the years and you know kind of just improv segues in between each story and just kind of give it a shot. But I thought I was going to practice in front of two or three people and then I'm out there with these other guys that I'd never seen before so I'm assuming they're all brand new too and they're like, oh, is this your 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 first time doing? It? I was like, yeah. He's like, oh man, that's cool. They all kind of seem like, oh, really, your first time? And I didn't think anything about it because I'm like, well, isn't it all your first time? <laughs> you know? <laughs> and then I walk in the room and there's freaking it's standing room only. There's like seventy something people in there, and my body goes freaking numb. <laughs> and Did you flop sweat? I, I it was opposite of sweat. My body went cold. I got super pale. I felt my legs <laughs> about to go. And thankfully, Flappers has somewhere to sit in every single one of their rooms. Which is the only stand up place that has places to sit down. So I literally just said, I was like, ah, oh, you guys have kids. <laughs> and the whole room just <laughs> like go, cracked yeah. up laughing. I was like, okay, we're all right. And because I, 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 the only reason why I sat down is I really thought I was going to pass out. <laughs> so you used so I, uh, to use so I just kind of, and I didn't know where the red, they said to look for the red light. I didn't know where the red light was. I didn't know where to look. Apparently I'd gone way over. Finally saw somebody by the door like waving me down. The room's pitch black. Right. And, <laughs> It was so funny because afterwards, but everybody was like, "Oh, that's such a great set." I'm like, "That, that was a set." I know <laughs> and other people were like, when I told them, they're like, "That was my very first time doing stand up." A lot of people were like, "Really? Like that's your first time doing this?" And it didn't. A lot of people didn't think I had never done it before. And I had a, there. I don't know if you know Erica Rhodes. She does the yeah. sad sad lemons, and she she's from local here. I performed. Uh, with her and I'd seen her before because her uncle was Garrison Keeler and he was in town. Mm-hmm. And if you don't know, uh, mm-hmm. old show we used to listen to the radio, Prairie Room Companion, and an amazing voice too, which is one of the reasons why I, I knew him. And the sound guy, the sound guy from that show, I mm-hmm. listened to him on Fisher Price or Reading Rainbow. He does all the sound effects with his mouth. Uh, Not Michael Winslow, he's a real yeah, white haired yeah. guy. Uh, um, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, anyway, so I, I was going to that and we uh, somebody had brought me to see her show. And then when I saw that she was on the ticket, I'm like, oh, it's a, com- a professional comedian that she'd been on NBC. And so I was like, hey, can you give me feedback tonight? Because it's only my third time doing this. And I had tried something new that was, it went horrible. I tried to do like audience interaction thing and tried to like mm. come up and tell me what you do. And I tried to make a trailer out of it. And kind of like the, the pranks that we've done. And it did not go. Uh, well. The rest yeah. of it went fine. But that part was kind of like, Arr. okay. So I asked her afterwards. She's like, actually, if, if you just rearranged your, your stuff a little bit better, that was a really good. I'm like, okay, well, that comes from a professional person right. that I know has done this for a living. So I didn't feel too bad. Like I was doing horribly. And then it just got kind of, it got kind of easy when I realized I couldn't, because that was the night I tried like memorizing setup, setup, punchline, setups. I tried right. reading, and it just, it just, I didn't, I can't do it that way. There's, mm-hmm. I know there's people that do that. It's like you know what such and such is, such and such, ha ha ha. You know what such and such is, such and such, ha ha. I just can't. I have to just tell just my freaking tell funny story. stories yeah. mm-hmm. and find some funny segue to go in between whatever. You're, you're not Steve Martin. No, no, he is you're one wild and crazy guy. Of- he rehearses um, everything. Everything's to the. No, there's no rehearsal for me. I do that all blind, all <laughs> completely raw up there. Whatever freaking. If it bombs, it bombs. If it doesn't, it's Jim Carrey style, really, without yeah. all the physical stuff involved. <laughs> yeah. And I, uh, I, 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 kind of just feel the room out too, because I, I feel like when you're doing stand up comedy, it's not about your material. It's about what they're in the mood to laugh at. Right. And you can always tell when a, a, a crowd is a little more into the adult humor as opposed to whatever. And I, I try to keep it on the clean side, but I do have a, 
a censored version of, of Fifty Shades of Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> See, that's all I have to say, oh, and people automatically start laughing. <laughs> oh, <laughs> hot and bothered. It's like, well, you change out Christopher Robin <laughs> with Christian Grey. <laughs> and suddenly Christopher Robin's red balloon sprang free. Oh, bother. And just, I read actual, I read, I, I read the actual lines from the, the freaking book. And it's so bad. And Winnie the Pooh's voice is just so much funnier. Yeah. So just little weird stuff like that. But I try not to do things where, because I've seen voice actors or people that do voices when they do stand up. And it's like, I have to find a way to force voices into this. Mm -hmm. So they shoehorn them in like, this reminds me of that one character that I do. And then I'm going to do it. Or this one guy, uh, I can't remember what actor it was, but this is, I've had more than one people show me this where literally all he would be, would do is say, and this voice actor is doing this. And then or this, this character doing this. And he does that thing. Or this is what it sounds like when character X and character Y are doing it. And I'm like, this is, lowest hanging fruit like this yeah. is the worst use of voices in comedy i feel like it should come naturally and if right. it doesn't come naturally you don't do it right yeah. so sometimes my improvise my, my my comedy is just whatever pops in my head at the time i, I tell the story about when i went to the universal for the very first time um and uh i was hoping to ride the harry potter ride. i did not know that the harry potter ride was made in china for for smaller people it was literally fitted for chinese children mm. and not american adults and at the time it's i was very tight 280 <laughs> pounds at the time maybe yeah, something 280 290 tight. and i uh i went in the road we waited through that line i didn't have a fast pass we waited in line for an hour and 15 minutes and if you know the ride i was to the sorting hat uh, that's yes. how close <laughs> That's yeah. how close I was to getting on the ride. It's right around the corner from there. They don't, this, have, they don't have like the thing at the airline where you have to fit your carrying. You're, you're getting, we're getting there. That's, uh, that's so be at the front of the line. This, <laughs> this tweenish looking young lady carries me to the side. It's like, excuse me, sir. Have you tried our test seat? I'm like, you have a test seat? I didn't. And I, so, so I went to the test seat, which is right there around the uh, right in front of the sorting hat. And the, the, literally the next corner is the ride. You get on at that point and the light didn't go blue. And she's like, I'm sorry, sir. And she like Game of Thrones shames, shames me back through the line all the way back to the front entrance from there. Now, what hey. you may not know if you don't live here is that there's a waiting room right there around the corner that I could have waited for my friend to ride the ride and literally takes you back to the gift shop. Instead of walking all the way back through the airbiter line with her going, shame, shame. What the hell? <laughs> Shaming you with a wand? It's, pretty, it's yeah. felt that way. <laughs> and then I lost like 60 something pounds and I came back and as I'm coming to the thing, there's a test seat right, right there in the front of the building. Yeah. But nice to know if I had, there was oh, testing geez. there the whole time. time. Right. I never noticed that before. Yeah. Would have been nice, wouldn't it? And yeah. uh, the little thing that I just thought of about the fact that there wasn't a t there was a test seat I didn't notice, and I just threw in a little bit of like that'd have been nice to know the first time around. By the way, yeah. gave me a lot of embarrassment. Next time you ride that ride, there's a you can go into the locker room area and you can cut and cut off. You know, that outside area where you wait in line outside. Yeah, line? you can cut off that whole thing. You just go into the locker we room. We have fast passes, so we oh, just well, you well, well, can do it that way. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you can do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> John, it is always a pleasure that Thanks, when you're man. here, it's always good to see you. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. All righty. Peace. Yeah. Thanks for all John of Bailey, one of everybody. Questions. Thanks for your energy. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Well, thank we'll, her. She gave me caffeine before I got it. Oh, excellent. We'll be right back to wrap things up and rack it up for Tech Talk right after this. Don't go away. Yeah. Hi, this is Carlos Ellis Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching Voice Over Body Shop. We are the World Voices Organization, also, also known, known as, as Wovo. We're the not-for-profit industry association of freelance voice talent. VoiceOver is a complex entrepreneurial business. Wovo is there to promote the professional nature of voice work to the public, to those already established in their voiceover practice, and to those who want to pursue voiceover as a career. Membership benefits include a supportive and creative community, a profile and demos on voiceover.biz, our searchable directory of vetted professional voice talent, our exclusive demo player for your personal website. Our mentoring program, business resources, and our video library. Our annual WovoCon conference, a fun and educational weekend with other members with, with the a chance, chance to learn, learn and, and network. network. Webinars and great speakers and weekly social chats with other members around the world. If your world is voiceover, make Wovo part of it. World Voices Organization. We, we speak, speak for those who speak, speak for a living. living. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. There's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. 
Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products, and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. VoiceOver Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources, and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions, bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, voiceactorwebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. Voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. This is Ariana Ratner, and you're enjoying VoiceOver Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. VOBS.TV. Back. We back. John Bailey. What a guy. <laughs> Just pull string and, and let him go. <laughs> Great guy. Yeah, I know. Anyway, next week on this very program, all you have to do is watch Tech Talk number 98. That's right. 98 is the next one. Yeah. And we're going to have a lot of great stuff to talk about. So uh, stay tuned for that. You got a question. You can still ask your question. If you got a tech question about your home mm -hmm. voiceover studio, now would be a good time to throw it in the chat room. So Jeff Holman can get it to us before his next. You no, know, I feel gig. bad. John didn't really properly get to plug his coaching. No, not at all. <laughs> I mean, he kept teasing it, but he never really oh, truly. He's easy it. to find. I mean, J O N. B A I L E Y. Just Google him. Okay, he'll find us coaching. All right. So you're you're doing stuff on TikTok. You making any money with that? No. <laughs> no. In fact, I've lost momentum. I I just the last month has been launching a new website. Right. You know, you're very full aware of what that takes. Right. And debugging it and finding every little thing that drives me crazy about the new website. Right. Um, all the things that you guys see pretty much were solidified quite a long time ago, right? It's all the back end stuff that I have to interact with that's been a work in progress, right? right? Like, I want a preference to do this. I want to be able to resort everything this way, you know? So it's been a tremendous amount of little things, but um, it's coming together. It's been built by Skills Hub. And skillshub.life .life is the uh, actual company. They're, they're a coaching platform for voiceover, but they also built the platform that my new website at georgedeat.tech runs on, and it's been an amazing learning experience. And we've got, I think, a much better place to be. Great. It's a more comfortable place to operate. It's easier for the actors to use. So come check it out. And if you want to get a deal, everybody wants a deal. Hey, you're going to get a deal. You go to GTT2, two, the number two, two numeral two, mm -hmm. point, P-O-I-N-T-O-H. GTT 2.0, and that gets you 20% off on anything on the website until the end of March. Cool. All so. right. Hey, there are people that donate to our show to make sure that it is technically magnificent. Technically. Yeah. Like we have, uh, let's see, The Bristol Group, mm -hmm. Grace Newton, Robert Leadham, Stephen Chandler, Casey Clack, Jonathan Grant, Tom Pinto, Greg Thomas, A Doctor Voice, Antland Productions, Martha Khan, 949 Designs, Christopher Epperson, Sarah Borges, Philip Sapir, Brian Page, Patty Gibbons, Rob Ryder, or Raider, depending on where you are, uh, Shauna Pennington Baird, Don Griffith, 
Trey Mosley. Trey, how you doing? Diana Birdsall and Sandra Mandrewiller. You got it. Finally, finally, we're able to pull that up, and <laughs> we need to thank our sponsors too, like uh, Harlan Hogan's Voiceover Essentials, Voiceover Extra, Source Elements, VOHeroes.com, VoiceActor.com, and WorldVoices.org, the industry association of freelance voice talent, reminding you to go to WovoCon May fifth through seventh in Orlando. Right? Yeah. Hey, go go to world-voices.org and learn all about it. Join the organization because it's 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 a different type of voice conference. It's not like big commercial thing, but we'll yeah. talk more about it. Cool. All right. We also need to thank uh, jo- Jeff Holman, who just gets it done with all the questions from people calling in and uh, writing in and typing in. And, uh, of course, driving herself nuts over there is Sue Merlino, Whose mouse, my mouse died on her while she was doing it. And she's like, ah, which mouse is going to work? You wouldn't even know it. No, nope, you wouldn't know she, from watching this. That's right. <laughs> and, uh, and of course, Lee Penny for being Lee Penny. Well, that's going to do it for this particular show. We're going to re rack it for Tech Talk. Don't go away if you're watching us live. If you're watching this in replay, <laughs> you didn't get the chance to ask your questions. Um, so stay tuned for that. Anyway, this is not an easy business. <laughs> Listen to John Bailey. It's hard work it to get it done. But the bottom line is, if it sounds good. It is good. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or V-O-B-S. <laughs> good night, everybody. See you. on the plastic uh, I need someone who's strong to help me lift this okay I'll get it hold on a second there brother yeah, my, my back is not there. doing well Jeff's all in there, brother. Yeah. There Jeff's, Jeff's on it okay all right. people are watching this what is, what is going on in there <laughs> oh they know where do you want it moved to well put it here for now and then put it back over there and then get that one in there Okay. No, I have this game. Do you want me to move these cords back <laughs> a little bit? Back, yeah. <laughs> All right. This is going to be a great tech talk, everybody. Don't go anywhere. I hope you got good questions because I don't got that much to talk about. That's fine. I got stuff to talk about. Good. Thanks, Jeff. Sure. All right. Mishka wants to come back in. Come on. Well, I can't see good girl. girl. I took a good girl. All right. Yeah, I'm just going to hit the restroom. Go for right it. Back. All right. Ugh. All right. Okay. <clears throat> <clears throat> Is this thing too low or too high? or? <laughs> what? He went to the bathroom. What? You want to come up here? <clears throat> I will feed you in a little bit. Um, I can. I was gonna throw up one thing about bone conduction headphones, but I can just I can throw that up here. Whoosh, like the wind. God, I'm so clumsy. I'll have it put together. Let's see. I'll share <sighs> uh, screen. Um, so, so I can show that. Why is it shutting off? Because the computer's going to sleep? 
Is the computer going to sleep? Is that yeah. why? No, no. It just it just oh. decides that it wants to not work anymore. Oh. Oh. Can we switch my cables real quick? No, no more mic cables with those silver connectors. They're always a problem. Neutrick only. Can you talk about that, Dave? Yeah. I will actually. Yeah, thanks. Like silver ones or like a added conductor or something? Is that better? Yes. I'll tell you in a moment. Okay, one, two, three, four, one, two. Okay, good. Clean as a whistle. Clean as a whistle. Oh, that's what I like. A clean whistle. We, we want it. Clean don't, as we a all clean want whistle. Clean whistle. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, okay, are we ready? We're about 10 after the hour here, so. We'll keep it short. Necessary. I don't have that much to talk about. All right. Let's see. Is this uh, mic in front of my I don't face? I have a 97, just letting you know, because uh, we're not at my house. It's 98. 98, yeah. Well, it's not in here. All right, we'll just we'll just act it. Don't worry about it. Okay. Okay, the helicopter's cleared. All right. Never stopped me before. We're ready to go. Are we ready? I'm trying to find the beginning of. Here we go. Okay, good to go. Good to go. I'll count you in. Five. This camera, two, four, three, two. Hey, it's time for voiceover body shop. Tech talk. Tech talk. Tech talk. Tech talk. Now Jeff says tech talk. Tech talk. Tech talk. We got lots of tech to talk about. Uh, you got a couple of things. I got I want to talk about sound treatment a little bit. Like Something acoustic treatment? Acoustic treatment. Okay, cool. Yeah. You know, so that, that'll be that'll be interesting. We can wax poetically on that for a long time. Right. And if you have a question about home voiceover studios, mm -hmm. You know, you don't get the chance to talk to two experts that actually know more about this than just about everybody else. Because And for free. Yeah, really. <laughs> I mean, you can hire us, but we're giving you the information here that you need. But then again, you got to learn how to do it. And having the equipment isn't necessarily what makes you good. Mm -hmm. you know, so anyway. People are also upgrading, equip up upgrading to equipment that they have no business upgrading to because they feel... My career requires me to upgrade now. Oh, and then they buy things and they have no idea why week. they bought them. And oh yeah. boy. All righty. So if you got a question about stuff like that or anything else with regarding voiceover technology, put it in the chat room, whether you're watching on Facebook Live or YouTube Live mm -hmm. or on CBS. You know, they might pick us up if their <laughs> program really sucks. <laughs> anyway, voiceover um, body shop tech talk right now. Tech Talk. Brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, the home of Harlan Hogan's signature products. Source Elements, the makers of Source Connect. VoiceOver Heroes, become a hero to your clients with award winning voiceover training. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your voice actor website doesn't have to be a pain in the butt. VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for voiceover success. And World Voices, the industry association of freelance voice talent. And now, here's your hosts, Dan and George. Hey there, I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Widom. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop or VOBS yes. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Not TikTok. Tech Talk. That's right. We may talk about TikTok, but But in, TikTok don't have Tech Talk. That's right. And the audio on Tech Talk and tick, TikTok is really bad. <laughs> it is. Okay. I'm <laughs> I'm in one of those moods tonight. So <laughs> Ah, uh, TikTok. Yes. Anyway, um, this is a show about home voiceover studios. You want to talk about a niche. It's, you know, in the entire world of subject matter, it's a niche. But when you only have a couple of big fish swimming in this little lake, you're going to get all the right information because you and I have built probably close to a thousand studios or more yes i mean we've both been doing this for over like 15 years and 
you, you learn stuff. I mean, we knew what to do when we started and then you go through everybody's place and it's like, well, well, this could be like this. Mm-hmm. That could be like that. I, you know, I was at, I was at a young lady's house this week and she's like, should I be in this closet or that closet? And it's like, well, this one is bigger. This one has more crap in it. <laughs> This one has an air conditioning vent. Uh, yeah, th- there's that. <laughs> but you have to, you don't, you don't know those things until you go in there and hear it. You know, yeah, sniff we, around a bit, right? I mean, and she was telling me how w- some panel company, I won't mention who, mm-hmm. was came in and they've got all these calculations and they're measuring the whole thing. And I'm like, you don't need all that overthinking stuff. it. And you know what? A lot of times those those companies they do all these measurements, right? They actually don't know how to properly acoustically <laughs> treat a small booth. And That's you know right. why? Because the math doesn't work. The, the physics models of acoustics mm-hmm. don't apply to small rooms. So they just, even if they do all the measurements, it don't matter. What matters is experience. Exactly. <laughs> Knowing what works. And what you hear. Right. You know, my ears are still pretty sharp. Don't tell my wife, but they're still pretty sharp. <laughs> I can hear things. I'm like, yeah, there's a note over here. Anyway, <laughs> you want our expertise because we know what's going on. And you can work with either one of us. Sometimes you end up working with both of us because you'll like mm-hmm. ask a question on here. And like, well, what do you think that we should do? Uh, I don't know if I believe uh, that guy. I'm going to hire that other guy. Exactly. <laughs> but if you want to work with George, all you got to do is go over to George the dot tech. We have a shiny new website, um, and you've, you'll notice there's a tremendous amount of options of services over there. We now have services for every popular DAW. So if you are, if you want somebody that really knows their thing when it comes to a W audition, the people that are available that to hire in our website are specifically experts in a W audition, including Dan. So you'll be able to hire those folks directly through our site and get the help you need on the schedule that works for you. At George the dot tech. And Dan has his world happening over at homevoiceoverstudio.com. Mm-hmm. I know mean, oh, you would have killed to have that one, but what are you going to do? I, I've had too many brands already in the last <laughs> 15 yeah. years. Well, at least I stay consistent. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If you go over to homevoiceoverstudio.com, one of the first things you will see, and I'm, I've been thinking about it is my specimen collection cup. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if people see the humor in it or they're like, well, that's disgusting. I hope they get the humor. in it. Well, that's (laughs) anyway, you you click on the specimen collection cup and it opens up a drop box where you can place an MP3 of your audio. You follow my instructions because I'm looking for very specific things. I, Mm -hmm. I need to hear the background noise. I need to hear you talking on your microphone. And then I need to hear, more of your background noise so I can compare all these things. Yep. And we need both folks. Don't send in just room tone. Right. We need to hear voice. We need to hear signal and the noise. Exactly. We need to hear both. And you'd be amazed at what we can find from there. There yeah. are things that are I'm finding are consistent in a lot of people's audio, but a you lot can of, tell the size of the room they're in. Oh, oh, like easily, can't easily, yeah. Within a, probably a small or margin of right. error. If it's badly treated, yeah. which we will mm-hmm. talk about in a little bit. Right. Uh, but yeah, it's um, there are a lot of techniques for getting a room to sound the way it's supposed to. Mm-hmm. Um, but you have to go into each individual one because yeah. every voice is different. Every room is different. And... Everyone has to be, it, when we say it has to be custom built, it doesn't mean that you've got to bring in a crew and it's no. like, okay, we're going to measure this and do all that. No, it's more a matter of trying to keep it as simple as possible. So you're not spending a fortune on stuff, especially yeah. if after a while you're like, eh, voiceover is not for me. You're not investing in a tremendous amount in it. If you start making money, then you can upgrade things a little bit, but we'll also right. talk about that a little bit. Right. Speaking about talking about a little bit of things, <laughs> what's in your tech update this week? <laughs> well, I mean, in absolutely zero particular order. Um, starting off, I think it was I think it was Jason Lanier White who was yeah. on the show about yeah. a month ago. Yeah. Mentioned bone conduction headphones. So I've started looking into it. I haven't bought any yet, um, but they the brand the brand apparent the brand is kind of like the one that is the kind of the innovator in this space is called shocks used Mm -hmm. to be called aftershocks and you can buy their open run 
mm-hmm. for example, for well, know, roughly $130, right? Yeah, yeah. But of course, like many different technologies, especially Bluetooth, there are plenty of knockoffs. And so you might want to consider looking at some of the lesser, less expensive ones that are like on things like Amazon if you're on a budget and you don't want to inv- overinvest in something that you're kind of dubious as to how useful it is. So why would you want these things? The idea is kind of the best of both worlds. It's the pros of wearing headphones, meaning you can hear communication. So if mm-hmm. you're on a phone patch, you're being directed, you're on Zoom, Source Connect, whatever, you can hear them speaking to you. So, and, and you're, you've got it, it goes with you. You can physically move around because it's Bluetooth. Yeah. I know people who ski with these things. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. It also has the added benefit of not plugging your ears. So, so it's can, not. Yeah. Hear anything going around, around you. Right. And it's not, so it's not really like wearing headphones because what you don't listen to on these bone conduction headphones is yourself. Uh, the whole point is to only use these to hear what's playing back and so that's really nice because now when you're performing you don't have that feedback loop into your headphones Mm -hmm. you don't have your um, ear canals being plugged with in-ear monitors or some kind of thing which changes the way you hear yourself right so your ears can hear you can hear your voice in the natural way your voice sounds is the way it should be right Right. and and so you have this way of monitoring only things that you really need to hear which would be like Let's say you're doing punch and roll of an audio book. You can hear the pre-roll, right? Um, you're being directed. You can hear the director, right? But you don't hear anything else you don't need to hear, including yourself. And I think that's a really interesting thing to, to consider. And I would be loving, I would love to hear in the comments on Facebook or YouTube who has tried these right. and found these to be really useful. It'd be no feedback either. So no you'd feedback. Be in front of a mic, and it wouldn't it wouldn't feedback. That's right. So so I, I'm curious to see if you've tried them before. What was your experience? Let us know down below in the comments because I I would love to hear uh, how people have used them and if if I'm getting a lot of good feedback about them, I'll start recommending them to our clients. Excellent. All so right. that's that's kind of a different direction to go with headphones. <clears throat> Coming up, also mic cables. We all deal with mic cables. This studio, we've got a lot of cables because we have a lot of microphones. A lot of leftover cables. And a lot of leftover (laughs) cables. And what we find is that the cables that we have the most trouble with, Dan, where's the one that we just unplugged? Oh, here it is. They tend to have a connector that looks like this. Can we try this camera? Maybe this will give us a better better view of it, Sue. They tend to have this kind of a connector. Now, this is an old-fashioned design connector from... The original was made by, I think, Switchcraft. Mm -hmm. Does that sound right? Yep. And the problem with these is a lot of them, the wiring inside is terminated with little screws instead of actually being soldered in place. That's one problem, which guarantee is going to cause loose connections. (coughs) The other thing I've noticed with these is, I don't know if it's a shielding issue, but these tend to allow more RFI and noise to get Mm -hmm. in versus the Neutrik style connectors. Now, the Neutrik ones, there's one on, on Dan's mic right here. There's one on my mic. Actually, actually I have a good look at it right here. This is this is a Neutrik style. This is actually a Neutrik brand connector. And they just seem to have a better uh, a better better termination with the cable. <coughs> Pardon me. Better termination, better solder joints. And they seem to be they seem to hold up to a lot more Abuse. Yeah. Soldering these things is a nightmare. Yeah. These, I don't know what it is about these types of types of connectors, but the ones that have give us the most trouble overall look kind of like this. So when you're looking at my cables, gravitate to the ones that have the connectors that look like this, the Neutrik style. They tend to just be a lot more robust and more reliable. And I think the connector is probably the most important thing of all on a my cable. Yeah. Here's another thing. <clears throat> there seems to be a gap between the outside and the inside wiring oh you can almost feel it twisting yeah, around inside like... oh yeah you're right you're right and that could be you know what it is is in this case probably it's a thin outer rubber coating mm-hmm. with a big airspace inside where the wiring inside floats around right so that's probably what's going on. i don't know if that's why it <coughs> was giving us trouble but when you squeeze one of these high quality whirlwind this is a whirlwind mm-hmm. You can feel it has a lot of, it's substantial. You're not squeezing the thing. Right. It's got a very heavy coating and it's got a very good shielding. 
And the shielding is that metal foil that's on the outside. That's what keeps the RF from getting into your Yeah, house. so oh. important. So when you're looking at cables, it's not really how expensive it is. It's the quality of the connectors, and it's the quality of the shielding. Um, and so, yeah, you can spend 60 to $80 for one mic cable if you get like a Megami Gold. But if you start Googling and look for the words like Neutrik, uh, Belden, or Mogami, and look for other mic cables, you'll find some out there that are about half that price that still have those important features. Right. So, got to stop buying these at all electronics around the corner. Yeah, some of them, some of them come from China. They're just designed to be cheap, and they forget some of the important details that make a cable reliable. <clears throat> Next up, going into the software side of things, um, I've recently started playing around with Waves plugin called Studio Rack. Okay. And what's cool about it, or it has multiple layers of coolness, but one of the main things that I love about Studio Rack is it is free, first of all. <laughs> it's absolutely a free plugin. I have it installed here on Twisted Wave, so I can throw a screenshot so you guys can see what it looks like. So it runs on Twisted Wave. It really runs on absolutely any DAW. Let's go to Window and Twisted Wave. And now, now you should see my whole Twisted Wave window as well as the Studio Rack plugin. me you got to hire me again <laughs> you got to have another one made the cool thing about studio rack is it allows you to make a chain of plugins that you want in their plugin and they they don't have to be waves plugins so what you see right here on this screen every plugin you see in this window with the exception of ozone that's a not a free one but a cheap one every plugin in here is a free plugin tdr nova Denoiser um, from Bertom Denoiser. Loud Max, which we're all quite familiar with for setting your output level, your, your makeup gain. And then one I threw on the end called DP Meter. Hmm. It's a little bit like the Waves Meter, but, you know, it's, it's a free meter. And so I was able to put together a completely free chain of plugins that you can now install in another DAW. I could take this same rack and then install it on Adobe Audition or Audacity, and I will get back exactly the same settings, everything, and it's portable from system to system. <clears throat> the next part that's cool about it is this macro area, these macro knobs. I can set up knobs that do specific jobs. So, for example, you don't have to understand that a low-cut filter is go to TR TDR Nova. <coughs> Pardon me. A lot of dust in the air. I don't know what it is. Um, I don't have to know to go into this kind of complicated looking plugin to go find the HP or high pass filter plugin <coughs> and okay. learn how to, <laughs> excuse me, and learn how to dial this thing in. Because if somebody like George set it up for you, um, now you can turn the low cut filter knob that's been predetermined to adjust exactly that tool. And now you'll be able to adjust the TDR Nova high pass filter without having to understand how the TDR Nova high pass filter works. You don't have to open this, go over here and turn this knob. I don't have enough room. Maybe I can make these work. But what happens? Oh, look at that. When I turn the low cut filter knob, I'm actually adjusting the high put high pass filter cutoff, mm -hmm. right? Going from like 80 hertz to 100 hertz to 120. And, and this is all real time. It if if nice. you're playing back your track, right. you will hear the effect in real time as you adjust it. 
And as you can see, looking at all these knobs, I have one for reduced noise. Now this is tied to the denoiser plugin, right? And it's adjusting the threshold. I have one for warm, which adds sort of a low frequency warmth, right? I have a bright, which adds some top end, et cetera, et cetera, right? All these knobs, and they're predetermined to do certain features. So you don't have to understand the minutia. You don't have to be afraid to actually adjust your settings. But you got to know what to listen for. That's right. And that's mm -hmm. the beauty of this. Instead of having potentially 77 parameters <laughs> to play with, you can have six or eight. And now there's far, far less controls. Do, do, you, do you ever go into a car museum and you see a Model T? Many <clears> times. And you look at it and go, wow, there's two different little levers on the steering wheel. Right. And then there's another dial on the dashboard. And you look at the floor and there's like, how many foot pedals are there? These things were really complicated to drive back then because they didn't know how to automate a lot of things like choke and everything else. Mm -hmm. As cars got more modern, choke became mm -hmm. automatic. There's a lot of things in a modern car. Now, electric cars are the logical conclusion. You know, you just press, it's like a golf cart. You press the, the pedal mm -hmm. and it starts to go, right? This is where we're trying to go. This is where I'm trying to go with this processing, right? Where it's not a Model T anymore. You don't have to understand how to adjust the timing, the spark all this other stuff, you can just get in and drive. That's the idea, and that's what's so cool about Studio Rack. So I'm looking forward to making more use of that and showing more folks how to use it. And I've cool. set up a Studio Rack service on the website where you can actually get that set up for you. Very, very last thing I'll jump into real quick, jump in and out. Do you know Twisted Wave has a video editing function? I've heard that, and I use Twisted Wave. I just haven't had the occasion to use it yet. Well, I'll tell you, the video editing function is nice because if you're doing self-tapes and you want to edit something up really quickly, mm -hmm. it's a very quick way to just chop up something and take out the dead space, right? It's mm -hmm. beautiful for that. But what I found the other hidden benefit of the Twisted Wave video editing isn't the video editing at all. It's the audio processing. So <clears throat> you've recorded something on your iPhone or your camera, and there's rumbling background noise because the air conditioning, the heater was on. Right. There's, you know, it sounds a little bit thin or whatever it is, it's hard to use the processing tools in, in uh, let's say, for example, iMovie. They're not that great. They're not very intuitive, blah, blah, blah. Now you can drag that video clip into Twisted Wave and use the processing in Twisted Wave, which uh, I think is more intuitive, Yeah, especially if you have a stack made for you for your video editing. And now you just drag your video in, apply a processing stack appropriate for the, for the video production, and then save the video again. And you don't have to know, oh, wait a minute, now that I'm saving the video again, what resolution am I supposed to save it at? It allows you to what do that. bit rate am I supposed to do? You don't have to think about it. It's just going to, imp it's just going to use the same settings that the original video had. Wow. So it takes away a ton of that annoying video stuff. You know, there's too many settings in video software because you have to worry about the video and the audio. Twisted Wave just, I think, just makes it so elegant and easy to get a file in, do a little audio cleanup, get it back out again, and not worry about loss of video quality, you know, bit rate settings and all this other stuff. Right. So I thought that was a really, I've just, That's I've been cool. playing with it more and I found it to be a really useful sort of side effect right. of having a audio slash video editor like Twisted Wave. Right. If you do a lot of video editing, it, you know, if you're doing a lot of video because everybody's doing video these days, yeah, it's probably a very valuable tool. I mean, I love Twisted Wave because it's just so simple. It's, it's, it's yeah. it is the simple audio editing Twisted Wave equivalent for video. Right. I don't know of anything that's more efficient and easy to operate. Everything else is um, considerably more complicated. Yeah. And people are very thankful when we recommend <clears throat> it. I wish we had a nickel for every time we've sold a copy of that. Well, <laughs> we just, we, we, we get it back because we give out the right advice for the right tools and it comes back around. Exactly. And we get to thank Thomas, the developer of Twisted Wave. He is the man. Thank you, Thomas. You're, you're awesome. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a great program. Yeah. I actually used it this way. I mean, I usually use Adobe Audition yeah. for everything. But if it's a long format thing, let it roll. It's not going to, I mean, not, not that anything is going to make my computer sweat. We've got those Mac minis with the M1 chips. Yeah, the M1 chips are you know, smoking fast. But, I, but I've gotten used to using <clears throat> to Wave. And, you know, just you could take a file and just throw it in something else. Yeah. That's the other thing. It's a lot of people are like, well, oh, how, I, I want to use this program, but I got to do it through this to yeah. do that. And I'm like, take the file 
and you put it in the other one. Yeah, Twisted Wave is not good for overthinkers. Right. Like if if you're like, <laughs> I want to know every single parameter. I need to. I need under. No, it's good for very efficient workflow. Yeah. It's like it's it's a switchblade. Yeah. You know, it's not a Swiss Army knife, so yeah. to speak. So that's what I love about. It. Anyway, sound treatment, acoustics. Yeah, I've, I've what had, have you been dealing with lately? Well, I've I've had a. It's been a week of <clears throat> people, as you just mentioned, who overthink things. Mm -hmm. There's everybody's they, they read too much they ask a lot of, i mean it's important to ask questions sure but they ask questions of people who don't give them the right answers yeah yeah you yeah. know don't ask on facebook somebody told me that <clears throat> dot 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 i heard that dot 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 right hey, yeah. oh I, I get that four or five times a day yeah <clears throat> one of the things that i keep hearing you know and hearing badly uh, <laughs> people not understanding the physical difference between soundproofing and sound treatment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, it's like, you know, should I put more Oralex to keep, to isolate myself more? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, they are two very different physical things. Right. You have, when it comes to the acoustics of your room, which George and I agree is by far the most important thing that happens with your, your audio. Cause if it's, clean on the outside when you're doing it it saves you so much trouble on the back end because you don't really have to do a whole lot to it if you if you record it right yeah isolation requires a number of things mass thickness uh being far away from noise you know like if you're if you live under a you know the runway of an airport not a great place it's to be doing be voiceover tough. it's yeah. going to be expensive right let's put that way it, well, I know it can be it done. It can be if you want to spend the money. That's right. You know, and as I always like to say, you live where you choose to live. Yep. And if you want to do voiceover, you better choose a good place. You know, out in the woods is a good place. <laughs> out in the cow pasture is a good place. <laughs> you know, just the occasional moo every now and again. <laughs> but you know, it, soundproofing is, a, is not easy. And it is by far the most expensive part of having a home voiceover studio. Yeah. So one of the things we recommend is, well, one, find a good closet that has, doesn't have an exterior wall. Right. Doesn't have a window. Got to deal with a closet that has a window. Got to do a window plug in there. Yeah. I mean, it's like right on third Avenue. It's like true going both ways. And you know, it's tough too in apartments. A lot of times those closets share a wall with the corridor. Right. Exactly. You know? And you yeah. know, clunk, 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 and, yeah. you know, or somebody else flushing a toilet or something like right. that. Right. So <clears throat> you, you have a couple of choices when it comes to soundproofing. One, you can spend a crap load of money on something, something good, like a studio bricks yeah. or, you know, whisper room or mm -hmm. you know, vocal Hopefully booth. That, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of companies to, and there's obviously more now. I think people need to understand this simple concept about booths. Mm-hmm. They were never designed to do voiceover. They were designed to prevent, and somebody actually called me about this this week. I, yeah, I'm going to be doing voiceover, but I have to, I have to practice my, my saxophone. So, um, mm -hmm. that I don't want to bother my roommates. Mm -hmm. Well, you need something like that to do that. Well, that's something the thing is gonna... most of those ISO booths, I think we're getting to are better at keeping the sound in the booth as opposed to than they are keeping, keeping sound from, from getting into the booth exactly. from the outside. And that's right. That studio bricks is one of the few companies that give you test data mm -hmm. showing both, both uh, types of isolation, right? Both sound originating outside and getting in and sound originating inside and getting out. And you'll notice that the booth has pretty different levels of performance right. for yeah. those two things. And the guy that started studio bricks <clears throat> started it because He's a saxophone yeah, player. He to play saxophone. <laughs> so it, it makes Piano. total sense. Yep. So you either invest in a booth or you find the right closet mm -hmm. and then you talk to you or I and we're like, okay, here's how you isolate yourself better. One of the things that, one of the sounds that comes in more than anything else, aside from air conditioning and furnaces, is refrigerators. Oof. It's like, mm. why? I, you can look at it on a waveform. You can look at it at a spectrogram. It is a, a steady mechanical noise. Mm -hmm you know, below 180 Hertz or thereabouts. And how do you deal with it? Well, mm -hmm. you can filter it out because it usually your voice doesn't even cover I think it's one of the more kind of easier yeah. type of things right. to filter yeah. out. But I've learned to recognize it. Yeah. You hear it. I'm like, well, of course you don't even hear it, but it shows up on the meter because it's actually pretty loud. 
you know, if you have, you know, elephant hearing, I suppose. <laughs> um, but isolation is important. Soundproofing is preventing sound from coming into where your microphone is. Right. All right. Right. The other part of this is sound treatment. Right. And that requires a lot of different things mm -hmm. because you can use materials that you have sitting around the house to do it. A duvet yeah, cover. True. Duvet cover. Killer. Just fabulous. I, I call it practical acoustic treatment. Exactly. You know, it's <laughs> Use like, what you have. Right. Because no one needs to see how the sausage is made. If it sounds good. It is good. That's right. So. That's the important thing. There are there are products. You know, we've got um, uh, Audio Mute and uh, you know, Vocal Booth to Go makes makes the, the producer's choice, mm -hmm. and those work really really well. But mm -hmm. they're not really that cheap. Right. So if you're just starting out, use what you got. You know, to put it on the walls, old duvets from Goodwill, yeah, exactly. Or <laughs> even old curtains work really old well. Draperies, old draperies, drapes, yeah. heavy stuff. But the thing is, the you, heavier the better. You got to drape it. <clears throat> because not only does oh, yeah, it, it has to have pleating, that's right. So it, yeah. you know, it, it will diffuse the sound. Right. So it bounces and then it gets absorbed. Yeah. But there's a difference between soundproofing and sound treatment. Mm -hmm. And the next person says, I'm going to get some foam soundproof to soundproof foam. my studio. Soundproofoam.com. Uh, it's yeah, it's, it, it's not, <laughs> it's not going to help. Yeah. But that one's been driving me nuts lately. Yeah. Well, no. Okay. It's been driving me nuts for about 15 years. <laughs> yeah. Since ever since we've learned the difference ourselves. Right. Exactly. <laughs> it's been driving us nuts. Right. Yeah. Anyway. So that's, that's my little rant for this week. So right. learn that, get it in your what heads. Difference? There's a difference between soundproofing and sound treatment. Thank you, Dan. You're welcome. All right. We got more to come. Uh, do we got any questions there, Jeff? Oh, we've got them piling up. All yeah, right. Baby. We're going to get to like. those right after these very important messages. So do not go away from Voice Over Body Shop Tech Talk. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez. And you're enjoying Dan and George on the Voice Over Body Shop. Have you noticed the increasing demands of clients regarding our home studios? Are they at a professional level to record V over broadcast? I've seen several now demanding cardioid condenser microphones along with AD converters at 24-bit 441K. Now that eliminates the majority of USB microphones. The VO1A and the MicPort Pro solve that problem. You know how I'm always saying that all the equipment we use is designed for making music? The VO1A Harlan Hogan Signature Series Studio Condenser Mic is tailored to the unique needs of voiceover recording. And the MicPort Pro 3 from Centrance has been the industry standard audio interface for over a decade, at home and on the road. The new MicPort Pro 3 brings incredible features like the new mic preamp with 65 dB of crystal clear gain, USB-C jacks with adapter for compatibility with standard USB ports, and a stunning headphone amplifier with a super convenient gain switch. You can get them both at voiceoveressentials.com, where you'll see all their great products made just for us VO people. All right. Well, let's talk about one of our other wonderful sponsors, Source Elements, the creators of Source Connect and Source Nexus and a whole cadre of other tools. Well, the thing about these tools is they're all about facilitating a session in a most efficient possible way. At a certain point in your voiceover career, you start realizing that your job is to make the job of everybody else on the production go smoothly and easily. There's a lot of people out there with talent, right? But at the end of the day, if you're the one that brings the talent and is easy to work with, understands your own tools, and gets consistent performances every time, not just performance acting-wise, but technical performance every time, you're going to be, they're going to want to keep hiring you. <laughs> I mean, that's the bottom line. They want someone that fits into their, their workflow. You might say you're a cog in a giant machine, doesn't sound very glamorous, but it's true. And the best voice actors know that that's true. And they're the ones that are going to keep getting hired. So if you want to be that really smooth running cog that really fits into workflows, you probably want to have Source Connect. So go over to source-elements.com and you can just kind of kick the tires over there. Get, get your account set up. You can get a trial license and see how it works. And if you want help, they have tremendous amounts of training and resources I am also available over at georgethe.tech to help you with our tech team over there as well. So there's lots of resources. Anyway, thank you, Source Elements. Let's get on with the rest of the show. There's too many questions. Let's get to it. <laughs> 
Hey there, I'm David H. Lawrence the 17th, and with my company VO Heroes and my team of coaches and my community of voiceover talent, we guide voiceover actors along their journey. And you may be watching VOBS here, uh, and not nearly as far along as many of the other people who are watching. You may not even have started yet. And we actually specialize in helping you do just that. So if you're watching all the stuff going on here on VOBS and going, I have no idea what they're talking about. I don't know, but I really want to do this. I'd really like to help you. Please go to VOHeroes.com slash start. That's VOHeroes.com slash start. And you can take our Getting Started in VoiceOver class, which tells you everything you need to get started as a voice talent. And I'd love to hold your hand along the way and help you with that journey. Again, voheroes.com slash start. That's voheroes.com slash start. This is Bill Ratner, and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Widom. VOBS.TV. And we're back here on Voice Over Body Shop Tech Talk, and we got questions from our amazing worldwide audience. You guys tune in. You know you can ask the questions here, and we appreciate it. And Jeff Holman is over here typing them down just as fast as you are typing them in. It's pretty amazing. Anyway. <laughs> this one came from email, right? The it, first one? Absolutely. From Daniel Britt. All right. This is a fascinating question. <clears throat> why, don't you, why don't you read it? So, All righty. I've stopped coughing now. I can oh, good, read it. Good. Um, I have a whisper room uh, booth in the basement of my house. I have taken care to use double sheetrock on the ceiling above my whisper room and plan to add mass loaded vinyl to that construction as well to help mitigate footfall noise. Footfall noise? Foot, footfall. Oh, footfall, footfall noise. Yes, footfall noise. Oh, yeah. Okay. But an idea hit me. <laughs> Would there be any benefit to surrounding my whisper room with MLV instead, if I don't necessarily need the whole basement to be sound treated, can I essentially place the MLV either inside or outside the walls of the whisper room and achieve some of the same benefit and ultimately take it with me if I move rather than installing it permanently in the ceiling above me? Wow. You're okay. going to need a crane to get it out there. That MLV is MLV is heavy. So very heavy, heavy stuff. Typically, it's one pound per square foot. Oh, jeez. Right? It's pretty heavy stuff. It's close to as heavy as like a sheet of drywall. So MLV, there's a lot of misconceptions about what MLV is good at and what it's not, right? Or mostly what they think it's good at. What, here's where you don't want to use MLV. This is where it's a big waste of money putting it flat up against a sheet of drywall mm -hmm. or putting it between two pieces of drywall, just making ah, a sandwich. Right. This is not a good use of MLV. If you're going to spend that kind of money, you're not getting the maximum benefit. If you're going to just sandwich it, I hit this mic again. This is why we put mics up here, <laughs> yeah, folks. That's right. Only for on camera do I do this. See, you know, I don't have um, one. <laughs> um, the whole point of MLV is that it, it's allowed to be left limp. It's limp. So mass loaded vinyl is flimsy. It's flexible. And it does its job when it's allowed to be limp. So if you have it flat against something, just glued to a wall or just stuck to something else, you might as well just have another layer of sheetrock. It at the cost of sheetrock, way cheaper than the same amount of mass loaded vinyl. Easier to work with. It's easier to work with. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And you're going to get the benefit. The only way you're going to get benefit truly the maximum benefit of MLV is to mount it to studs like in a, in a, in a wall cavity where there's a space between the stud and the drywall where that material is allowed to sort of essentially limply hang there, limp mass. Um, and then you want to airtight seal the perimeter all the way around it. That's when you get the full maximum effect out of MLV. Um, only when you use it in this way. And I've only learned this in the last four or five years, getting to talk to some really and much more experienced acousticians than I have. I've learned that this is really where MLV shines. This is what it's really made to do. Will you get benefits sticking on the wall of your booth? Yeah, 
Maybe you're cutting the height, but it's expensive bit. for doing that. Oh, it's a lot of money for what it is. You might as well just literally sheet the outside of your whisper room with another layer of drywall and just, just to give you more mass. I mean, but footfall noise is by far the most difficult thing to eliminate. Really, it really is. We have gone to great lengths to eliminate footfall, people walking around upstairs from going into a wall, coming out through the ceiling, coming into your whisper room or any kind of booth for that matter. It is by far the most complex and challenging thing to eliminate completely. I know how to do it because I've worked with the best guys in the business when it comes to figuring out isolation for vibration and other things. And I, we have systems. There's, it's sort of the turducken approach <laughs> or the belt and suspenders. You've got multiple layers of things that are all working together, but one thing like mass loader vinyl on its own whether you attach it to the wall above, the inside of your booth, or the outside, is going to give you very, very little improvement. Right. Not right. enough to justify the cost. Yeah. Like an onion or a Russian doll, essentially. Yeah, well, there you go. I like the Russian doll one. Yeah, yeah absolutely. All so right. So thanks for the question, uh, Daniel. Yeah, don't really, overthink that one. Yeah, if, and, if, and if you're realizing that the cost is not making sense, or if you want to find out how to make use of the stuff because you, you already bought it, <laughs> then reach out to me. I'll... I hope you come up with a plan. <laughs> All right. All right. Next up. Jeff Holman has a product question. Our very own. Should I swing the mic around to Jeff? Let's sure. Go. All right. Go, Jeff. What do you think of the Apple Watch? And what do you think about the Ultra versus the regular? All right. Well, my wife and I got our, got our Apple Watches for our anniversary a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. I used it for a while, <clears throat> and it started to bother me. Because it sometimes it would you could answer the phone with it. Sometimes you couldn't. Mm. Sometimes suddenly you hear someone talking to you over it. <laughs> uh, sometimes there was all sorts of weird stuff. And I'm like, there's a clock on the wall. I have my iPhone. Why do I need it to be connected to this thing? Yeah. There were things I did like about it. How about the EKG functionality? Did yours have that? It did. Yeah. But I... You know, I figure if I'm still breathing, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> so I, I you know, yeah. I, I'm, 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 I wasn't really sold on it. It, mm -hmm. it was neat. It was like, oh, I don't have to answer the phone. I just go, you know, Dick Tracy calling Joe Jitsu or whatever. It was fun, but it was more of an annoyance to me than anything else. But I think to some people who are, who can multitask like that mm. and, and, and understand how to use wearable technology like yeah that. and that was probably one of the first real pieces of wearable technology the really good one yeah really good quality uh, yeah. one yeah. i mean it works but programming it and you know just putting the mickey mouse face on it was tough mm -hmm. you know and then suddenly you do an update like where's mickey mouse where do, where'd he go <laughs> yeah i i mean it's a good question jeff i mean neither of us are wearing one right i i don't have one i and believe me <laughs> trust me i've thought about it many times especially when the ultimate came out the thing that the the ultimate at $800 the thing that was missing was the feature that I wanted it to have that the phones now have which is this GPS two-way communication mm. for someone that goes out mountain biking and is off the L, I'm completely off the 5G LTE network a lot San Gabriel Mountains all that stuff's off the grid like you are offline all the time and it's it's stressful for your your lovely partner at home is wondering when the heck you're coming home. Where yeah. are you? Are you alive? Your handlebars. Right. You know. And so, so the iPhone 14 has that feature, but the ultra watch doesn't. Now if the ultra watch had it, and I bet the next one probably will, mm -hmm. that's a lot more compelling because it's built into the watch. It's all new all the time. And that feature I think would be kind of worthwhile, but that's the problem. The problem is, and I love tech, but I think I would be futzing with that thing constantly. That's I think what I, I would that's be what I didn't like. fiddling with it, yeah. wanting to look at it. It's bad enough that the phone is this constant addiction to hold it. I think I would just be using it constantly. Um, the one thing that I that that would use, I might buy like a cheap used one just for this one thing, and that is, it can be a second screen for your camera on your phone. So if you're doing self tapes with an iPhone, right, and you want to shoot with the good camera. The one on this side, ah, it's yeah. a big pain in the ass because you don't know if you're in frame, you can't hit record, etc. Mm. But with the watch, you can preview this the camera on the watch uh, and hit record uh, on the watch. That is like to me the killer. That's the killer app. 
that's the one thing that would cons- I would maybe I'll get like the Apple Watch three on eBay, you know, just to have that feature. But I don't think I would wear it all the time. I wear a Garmin watch when I go mountain biking. It's cheaper, it's lighter, the battery lasts for a week. I don't have to think about it. It tracks my ride. It does what it needs to do. It has heart rate tracking and stuff. Yeah. So it's, I don't know. I'm so tempted, but it's, it's gadget. Yeah. yeah. Too much gadget. gadget Get a Fitbit. Stuff. Well, yeah. Again, my Garmin was like $90 and it does just enough stuff. Yeah. It, it'll, it'll show me notifications. I can read a text on it. I can't reply, but I can see if it is important. And it's nice if your phone's in your pocket or not on you to have something occasionally that gives you a text message. How many times do you miss texts? Oh, I didn't see that until later, you know, but yeah. it, that is handy. And it's just distracting enough, not to the point of being constant annoyance. So, ah, I don't know. There you go. It's not an easy answer, yeah. but I hope that was helpful. Very helpful. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Grace Newton asks, for the guys on Tech Talk, that would be you and me oh us yeah, right yeah um where are the or what are the pros and cons of the new road nt1 fifth generation especially for one who likes to record well up front and do less editing in post well gee that sounds like just about everybody sure um now the generation five that's the combination xlr and, and USB. usb that's right yeah now the nt1 now that's a that's a mic that i recommend all the time it's a it is a i would call it a gold standard at this point right at the budget level right absolutely right and the fact is is it's great price uh, this particular model is very versatile because you can use it as a, it's got its own interface in it, right. but you can also hook it up to XLR and it becomes just a regular good old road NT one. Right. The NT one is great one because it's very quiet. It's a, it has very low noise, very low self noise. Yeah. They claim it to be the lowest in the business. It's, it's right in there with a couple others. Yeah. So it's yeah. hard to say is the quietest, but it is, it is really quiet. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it comes down to that equation that you and I always talk about. For every thousand dollars you go up in price on a microphone, you maybe get one percent increase in actual <laughs> vocal quality. You know, yeah. it's it and it, and sometimes it's worse. Yeah, because exactly. the mic has too much it color, up everything, or and, too sensitive, or yeah. too much character, or whatever. You know, yeah, exactly. So you know, the and the and the real bottom line with a microphone, mm-hmm. and this is one that you know people have yelled at me about it and said that you're <laughs> absolutely wrong i'm like oh man there is no microphone out there that is going to change the way you read copy <laughs> it's unless not it's a, unless it's a mic that literally is in your freaking way that's right <laughs> so you know i've seen people with like yeti and a giant chaotica eyeball and they're like <laughs> they're they're like craning their neck or they have <laughs> contort to try to read their script or they have a big round pop screen they their script they're trying to read i'm like that's when it, that's when it can help you read copy exactly you know <laughs> yeah. and, and as you can hear you don't need a pop screen if you right. use your mic properly right as we have it set up here Right. Well, the Rodin T1 is interesting. I'm, I've seen videos. I've seen the tests. I know it sounds good. It's it's they they know how to make a USB mic because they've made the NT USB for a while. I have the US, NT USB Plus. So they just probably took the same technology and shoved it in the tube. I think so. I mean, and what's interesting is you, there's a trade off between the NT USB Plus and the NT1 fifth. Fifth gen. Fifth gen, fifth gen yeah. The big trade off is that there's no zero latency monitor, headphone level mixer, headphone jack, right? So, again, if you need that feature, you don't get it, right? A lot of us know that you don't need headphones while you're at voice acting. So, for then, you won't need it. And the whole idea of this listen, listen the 32 bit <laughs> float technology yeah. is getting a huge amount of, hey, let me in, let me explain to you what it really does, right? At the end of the day, it's not a game changer. It's just another technology that you're going to be mystified about. Right. Just set the recording levels with peaks between minus 12 and minus 6 and move on with your life. <laughs> if the script says, oh, we want peaks somewhere around minus 18, don't even freaking worry about it. Just read it. <laughs> just record. <laughs> don't worry about, just make sure you're getting nowhere near clipping. Right. You're going to be fine. And this microphone's USB interface is going to make that easy for you. If you want to buy this mic as a spare or a travel mic, so you don't have to have an interface with you, great. Right. It it's it's a really awesome mic. It's the same price within a few bucks of the prior generation, and you get USB for free. 
So it seems like a no brainer. I, I don't I know. I want to try it. See how, see how, yeah, it's I wouldn't, I wouldn't like buy it if I already have an NT1 and an interface. Right. I wouldn't need that. Right. Yeah. I already have that. But if you have, if you want that backup capability or that all in one capability, then it's, then it's cool. So all right. anyway, good. It's a good product. Yeah. It's proven, proven technology. Yes. Tony DeSandro, you get this one. All right. I'm a newbie to VO. Welcome. Well, great. Great to have. You. I'm glad you're here. Um, and have been trained on audacity. Good. Um, sounds like you prefer Adobe audition. Um, appreciate your thoughts on Adobe audition versus audacity. I'll go. And then Dan goes, mm -hmm. uh, cause we both have opinions. Um, well, we Audacity is perfectly fine, except um, the problem with Audacity is it's free software maintained by a bunch of volunteers. You don't have tech support directly for Audacity because there's nobody, nobody directly to call on to get help. Um, because it's free software, all the third-party plug-in companies like Waves and others don't take it seriously. They don't usually test it. So um, when Audacity does updates, sometimes they're a little bit irrational. <laughs> they add a feature that makes no sense or it's not well thought out or they remove a feature or they kind of do things that don't really make a lot of sense. And that's to the problem with Audacity. As good as it is and as good as it's getting all the time, it's still this little bit of unpredictableness to it. I get that a lot. I just upgraded Audacity and now this doesn't work. And that's what really bugs me. And this is why I know Dan loves Adobe Audition yeah. because it's stable and you get support and you can count on it. Solid as a rock. Yeah. You know, and it's, and you know, they, they make little improvements on it. Yeah. They're not adding a lot of new features. No, no, anymore. no. They're really, it really, it, it's, it's as, it's as the fully product baked. ages, as yeah. they continue to update it, the engine gets faster. <clears throat> yeah. It, uh, it does things very, very quickly. Right. The spectrograph in that is as good as anything else for yeah. getting rid of lip smacks. And Absolutely. The spectrograph and audacity has got a long way to yeah. go. I mean, getting rid of mic pops, not that I ever do mic pops because I use my mic, right? But <laughs> occasionally, you know, you might lift up and go, Oh, Peter Piper picked a peck of pick, you know, and you want to oh. get, Oh crap. Yeah. I, but, but it, it shows up so clearly in a spectrograph as mm -hmm. this big, bright yellow blob with gets darker in the middle and you just highlight it and you hit, auto heal a few times and right. gone and you'll never even know it was there which is which is nice and and then you don't have to worry about lots of plugins i know you love the plugins i never use any plugins i just i find that software that has like a audition or even twisted wave has basically everything you need to produce proper recording you know yeah. voiceover yeah if you record properly as we said, the environment has to be right. Your mic technique has to be right. And you've got to understand how to set levels properly. And that seems, that's another one that people don't get. Mm -hmm. It's like, uh, because as you say, they're, you're, you're getting instructions from engineers who currently don't know what they're talking about either. They it's know what game of telephone, right? Exactly. <laughs> it's oftentimes you're seeing these specs from, you know, casting companies and right. video game companies and that they don't really understand how would you even get that number to begin with? Right. How would you how would you measure that? I remember an email thread that you, that you had with with a producer that was talking about oh, that, boy. and it was like, well, they said this and they said that, mm -hmm. and you would not realize it's like, well, this person talked to that person, that talked to this person, that, to, <laughs> and they and none and and only one person at the beginning of the line actually may have know. known what they were talking about. I want to see the family <laughs> tree or the genealogy chart on <laughs> on how that information made it from you know from one end to the other because. Yeah, somebody initi initiated or originated that spec. Right. Somebody. I don't know who. I'd love to talk to them. Yeah. Call me. Yeah, they're, they're hiding behind a brick wall because they knew you were there. <laughs> uh, Terry Frisco asks, uh, what's your take on the Sphere L22? How good is it? How good is ability to mimic the mics it claims it can? Well. Really good. Yeah, it, it can do it. <laughs> it's accurate. But here's the thing why would you want to keep mimicking all these different mics? It's not going to change the way you read copy. I 
don't get that yeah. at all. If it's a good mic on its own, yeah. if your environment's right, you set your levels right, and you use it properly, what do you okay? Maybe it sounds like a U87. I don't know an engineer. I don't think even you could tell if Jeff was using a U87 and I was using a U87 that you'd be able to tell, or I was using, say, a Caddy 100. You wouldn't know that. Or even this, the or even M850. the M5 M5, M5 here. I would probably end up liking the sound of the M850 better than the Neumann U87. I, to be I, honest, I, I like this mic. This is it, it's yeah, it's it's smooth. It's it's cri- but and it's still crisp and. It, it's not peaky it doesn't have like a nasalness or honk to right. it or eh. it just it's pleasing right um yeah the l22 is an amazing piece of technology and it's not just the mic it's the software right it's a whole right. system it has a learning curve it has an expense attached to it it's really impractical unless you also have already invested in an apollo um it's harder to to get you know you can use it without the apollo but it, you won't get the same kind of workflow um and yeah, it's it's amazing if you just have absolute un- incurable gas. Yeah. Or like you're a you guitarist can, and you're like trying to fit, you know do different things and different effects. Yeah, if but you're that's not voice if though. you're a multi-instrumentalist performer and you need to record drums and a guitar and then acoustic guitar and then a cello and then some singing and you don't want to have 12 15 microphones it makes a heck of a lot of sense. If you're a voice actor and you just you've ex- you you don't know your career is stuck you don't know what it is you've tried everything you've been to the best coaches and you're like i just got to get a new mic okay go ahead and give it a shot (laughs) because at least then you're not married to one choice you can now try other other mics it's kind of the tinder of microphones (laughs) tinder of microphones you don't have to commit to Not anybody that I know from personal and you experience. Can, you can but... swipe left and right and, and try them all out until you find <laughs> one you like. And then when you're done, sell it and buy the real thing. I had more fun with my ribbon mics. You know, it was like, well, that's what's, I mean, you can, if you've always wanted to play with ribbon mics, there's right. ribbon mics in the sphere and you can play with those too. So exactly. it's great for playing around and it's fun to experiment with. And yes, with the right training and the right tech setting it up for you. Yes, I can help you. It can sound amazing. If you're just playing around with it, it will lead you down many, many rattles of, yeah. of distraction. Yeah. Okay, we got a couple more questions. One's yes. a comment. Okay. I which, you know, yeah, you know, we appreciate your comments, but it's our show. We get to make all the comments. <laughs> uh, and one was about AI, and John Bailey was talking about that last week. <laughs> and yeah, it came up when John Bailey was talking about it. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, we didn't get to Terry's comments. Uh, gotcha. Right. Okay, so uh, last one. Uh, what do you think of the MK600? I haven't used it. Uh, using the the AA battery for on the go recording with its high pass filter. That's on. A, I've I've never. I'm not familiar. It's a noisy. With it. It's a noisy. It's a noisier Noim. MKH460. <laughs> that's the MKH600 is fine. It's noisier. Yeah. Like it's just got more noise. Okay. It's hissier. Um. Yeah. Bait. Bottom line. Um, Tara, I know you want to get your comment out. AI won't be able to replace character acting, but it is a real problem for VO genres like corporate narration and IVR. Yeah, you're probably, you're probably right. Right. Well, we, we right. don't know. We just don't know. I, yet. I, when it comes to AI, I think it's a whole nother discussion that, you know, maybe we need to bring all these somebody. conferences are going to have round tables about we, AI. We have a webinar coming <laughs> up with, with, uh, world voices, uh-huh. with, uh, with a bunch of different uh, experts on it, people who mm-hmm. are licensing voices, people who are using it, you know, and, and that's going to, I think it's on the 23rd. So join world voices and then you can listen to that webinar and, yeah. and, and figure that one out. But I, we're going to hear a lot about that at, at voiceover Atlanta. For sure. For you know, sure. Which, which you and I will both be at. And very quickly, just to put Rob Williams's question to bed, you're using a 15 year old version of Adobe audition. That's oh. not supported. <laughs> What do you want? What do you want? What do you want for nothing? <laughs> exactly. Uh, All right. Sorry. <laughs> well, that's going to do it for your questions and for Tech Talk. And we're going to take a quick break right now, and then we'll wrap it up right after these messages. Yeah. Hi, this is Carlos Alas Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching Voice Over Body Shop. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. There's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, 
Stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products, and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. VoiceOver Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources, and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions, bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, voiceactorwebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. Voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. We are the World Voices Organization, also, also known, known as Wovo. We're the not-for-profit industry association of freelance voice talent. VoiceOver is a complex entrepreneurial business. Wovo is there to promote the professional nature of voice work to the public, to those already established in their voiceover practice, and to those who want to pursue voiceover as a career. Membership benefits include a supportive and creative community, community. a profile and demos on voiceover.biz, our searchable directory of vetted professional voice talent. Our exclusive demo player for your personal website. Our mentoring program, business resources, and our video library. Our annual WovoCon conference, a fun and educational weekend with other members with the chance to learn and network. Webinars and great speakers and weekly social chats with other members around the world. If your world is voiceover, make Wovo part of it. World Voices Organization. We We speak speak for those who who speak for a living. Hi, this is Bill Farmer, and you are watching Voice Over Body Shop. It's great. Are, are we on? I think we're on. She didn't point to we're us. On. So how are we supposed to know? <laughs> I mean, she's a good director, but you know, you got to go like this. And then, okay, especially if you're not looking at everything. <laughs> uh, next week on this very show, I know we have a great guest coming up. I'm not going to say that person's name. Because eventually they're going to write back to me. There's two people actually that I the waiting working for them to reveal themselves. themselves. That's right. You know, like I talk to them on Facebook. Take the, you know, send them an email. They they said they wanted to do so the show. Many great guests to be had. I we know. just have to be persistent right. and patient. Yeah. But speaking of great things, there are yeah. people who donate to our show to help Darn us straight. defray the cost of doing this perfectly every mm-hmm. week, like we do. Uh, let's see here, Robert Leadham. Oh, yes. Thank you, Robert. The Bristol Group. Uh, Stephen Chandler. Casey Clack. Jonathan Grant. Thomas Pinto. Shelley Avellino. Greg Red. Thomas. Uh, Dr. Voice. Hateland Productions. Martha Kahn. 949 Designs. Christopher Epperson. Sarah Borges. Philip Sapir. Brian Page. Patty Gibbons. Rob Ryder. Shauna Pentington Baird. Don Griffith. Trey Mosley. Diana Birdsall. And Sandra, Sandra Manwiller. All righty. Uh, hey, homevoiceoverstudio.com. If you want to talk to me about getting your home voiceover studio right, uh, or you have no idea what you're doing and you're like, what equipment do I buy? Go over there for the advanced stuff. Well, advanced stuff, but also some, I'm actually going to VO Atlanta. I'm actually a, a speaker. Yeah. I'm paying to be a sponsor so I can be at VO Atlanta. Yeah. And I'm doing an X session. So help me offset the cost of attending VO Atlanta, would you? Maybe showing up. <laughs> can I you hang can... out in your session? <laughs> yeah. So the X session, I think there's 12 seats. Yeah. I, last time I checked, I think I had eight remaining. So mm. there's plenty of seats. 
It's 199 bucks, and it's three hours of me talking about mic to MP3. It's really sort of just everything you need to know to get great audio and get it quick. Like get y'all don't have time to mess around. So it's like, how do you get efficient, great sounding audio to your clients with the least amount of fuss and all that stuff? So that's what Mike to MP3 is about. So if you're going to View Atlanta, check out my X session, please. I'd love to see you there. It's on Thursday. Um, so anyway, that's that's what I'm plugging. And by the by the time you see the show, we're still offering the GTT two number two point P O I N T O O H coupon code for twenty percent off. That's good till the end of March at the new George the dot tech. Excellent. We need to thank our wonderful sponsors because mm-hmm. they have been incredibly loyal. Like Harlan yeah. Hogan's Voiceover Essentials, Voiceover Extra, Source Elements, VOHeroes dot com, Voice actor.com that's which right. is a new product from voice actor websites which, which we've is, both used it's a it's a templated system for creating your voiceover studio or your voiceover website Acting website yeah super duper fa- 10 minutes you can have your a voiceover website mm-hmm. perfectly templated you don't have to overthink it so we appreciate that and worldvoices.org the industry association of freelance voice talent wovocon is coming up may 5th through the seventh in Orlando, you got to be a member to go. So join up and join us in Orlando. It's going to be a great time, different type of conference. Not, it's not no, no hype, no selling. It's just members helping members. So right. that's going to be great. Mm-hmm. Anyway, thanks to Jeff Holman for doing a killer job tonight uh, yes, on the sir. couch over here, just getting us all those questions mm-hmm. and Sue Merlino for, you know, getting it done, even with her, her with the mouse going. The gimpy down. mouse. Yeah, it's interesting. Without, without and thanks for wearing the Hokies colors sweatshirt tonight. <laughs> I really appreciate it. Yeah. Go Hokies. Yes. And Lee Penny, because he's Lee Penny. All righty. That's going to do it for us this week. We're here to help you with your home voiceover studio because your audio is really, really important. The thing is, is if it's right, it's right. And if it's bad, it's usually something that is wrong that's going to prevent you from getting the job, not if it's right. So if it sounds good, it is good. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Willem. And this is voiceover. Body shop. Or VO. BS. Tech talk. Tech talk. Tech talk. Tech talk. Tech talk. Have a great week, everybody. Later, everybody. Later, everybody.